Joyful Rogue, KCIV4, and Great Old One. And we're alive! Hey guys! Hey What's there. up? <laughs> Let's see. Hey. I, I have so many windows open right now. I'm trying to. I think that intro went ha ha half as good as I was hoping. Uh, <laughs> it's the first one. Uh, yeah, it, and it was a misunderstanding. Uh, it's going to be better next time. Uh, anyway... Oh, my cam went all out of sync. Okay, here we go. Hey guys, my name is Scream112. With me today is a lot of people, and I'm really bad at introductions. I need to write something down for next time. Uh, I'm gonna start by opening my beer, so I'm gonna relax, and then uh, I guess we just go the wheel around here. Uh, let's start with the guy on the left, which should be Yolf Joyful Rogue. Uh, tell us who you are. Well, I'm Joyful Rogue. I've been streaming Feria for as long as the beta was open, I believe. I've been giving away so many keys. I've actually meeting people all the time that actually received keys from me, so it's beautiful. I'm streaming Feria not as often as I would used to, but it's pretty active still. So you can just find me on Twitch TV slash Joyful Rogue for now I am here. I've played about over 700 games of Feria, so more than most, if not more than all. And I'm here to have some fun and talk about the game with some cool peoples. Awesome. Uh, well, let's just move on then. We have uh, someone with many nicknames. We have Ancient Slumber in chat, but he's known as uh, Good... Oh, shit. What is it? Great Old One in game and is uh, ranked top 20 or something right now on the very important beta ladder. Very important, definitely. Okay, so I'm uh, Ancient Slumber, also known as uh, Great Old One in the game. And... Um, Overmind SC2 a long time ago, if anyone remembers. I do. And <laughs> yeah, and uh, actually I'm here because of uh, Joyful Rogue. He kind of showed me the game and uh, gave me a key. I won a key in the <laughs> in You're the awesome, bro. <laughs> yeah, and uh, now uh, you know I'm like uh, sixth on the ladder, I think, which doesn't really matter because sometimes I'm like seventy because I just try weird decks. And that's it, I guess. Awesome. Okay, let's just move on. Uh, in the blue corner, or in the blue card, uh, we have uh, the American representing. <laughs> um, I, I guess something in Texas. I don't know where the hat is from, but uh, KC4, yeah, like another streamer. Hey. Hey, what's up, guys? So I stream at KCIV4. I stream Feria. I pretty much play for fun. I'm not really super competitive. I don't try to get like that perfect awesome deck. I, I really just focus on enjoying the game and learning as much as I can and being active in the forums and in the community. So, I'm here as the typical American, has no idea what's going on. <laughs> and the guest of this show today is Swagbill on my other side here of the Feria logo with a with Charge 59 and the Legendary card. Um, yeah, you're also streaming and you're... What are you ranked right now? You should probably know that better than I do. Um... I'm ranked 5 at the moment. And tell uh, the people I, who I you are. <laughs> oh, I'm Aaron, uh, otherwise known as Swag Beetle in game. Uh, right now I'm at 5, and I basically just play red. Just red is the best color. Uh, yeah, that's really all you need to know. Uh, I stream at, at twitch.tv slash swag underscore beetle, and then that's about it. If you want to see red play, you should come watch me. If Everyone you want to see structures. For you. I, I don't play don't, structures at the moment. I don't believe I've met a better red player than Swag Beetle, honestly, lately in the ladder. He's yeah. ridiculously good. And very creative. <laughs> Thanks. As well. Knows what he's doing. Yeah. Awesome. Everybody's expecting me to keep this moving. Uh, I yes. feel the pressure. Uh, <laughs> where's the Google Doc? Holy shit, I closed yes. the Google Doc. I just couldn't find it. I'm like f failing in the first show. Let's see, Feria Talk Show. Open, please. Really quick, please. 
So that's us waiting for the fair, for the fair talk show uh, document to open. Here we go. Um, I I we need to find topics to talk about. Uh, let's start with uh, the Jack cruelty. Uh, is it real? It's uh, it's definitely something we need to talk about. Joyful. Uh, no, it's it's, <laughs> it's something that was talked about more than I would ever wish it was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you people know, but there's uh, if you Google joyful hitting a jack, you will find a lot it's a of yak. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yak, yak, whatever. <laughs> <It's a> yak. <laughs> <laughs> you will find the evidence that is clearly not photoshopped. If if there was any cruelty to be had, it's your mispronouncement of the name. See, someone already linked it. <laughs> See, someone already linked it. It took ten seconds for someone to link it in chat. Thank right. you, cubes. <laughs> always, always there for you. <laughs> That's the best. You haven't seen it yet, Kesa? No. Oh, really? It's like the uh, <laughs> most epic thing ever uh, to that happen um, to a yak, yeah. I guess. They have a pretty boring life, and all of a sudden, Joyful came there with his big fists. Well, <clears throat> well and so let me let me maybe clarify what really happened in the real reality of the of the real peoples. So basically, there was a game when I was playing against a forest player. I was playing uh, a uh, desert style that was focused on uh, killing the orb as fast as possible. And I had this one Jidan Templar that was flying towards the orb. And on the way to the orb, the Templar kinda was flying by the Yak. And I told the Templar to be careful. <laughs> but she just attacked the Yak regardless. This fight. <laughs> My, you told my, it to be careful. <laughs> I told them to be careful, and you just poked the yak in the eye as it was flying by. And some of the viewers got upset, and unfortunately one of the viewers was Watch Your Back, who was a really good artist, it seems, on the computer. And he did this horrible frame drop with me punching the yak, while in reality it was just my <laughs> Templar flying by. And then there was another game that <laughs> I was playing... Uh, another time you hit a yak! Oh. No, I didn't. I accident. told you it was my Templar. And then there was the, another time where I was playing Gold Rush with Battle Augers, and one of them just got hungry, you know, and <laughs> he just wanted to grab whatever was closest to him. <laughs> you know the story. It, was, was just, it wasn't me. It was just my... I, you tried to control Augers. <laughs> <laughs> you, you try to control ogres. Yeah, I'm not good at that. I'm I'm playing a lot of green right now. Uh, green OP. Um, so let the, okay, I'm adding adding better. the names here to everybody. The only one who doesn't have an ability is actually a great old one here. So if Chad has a suggestion for what ability he should have on his card, you can feel free to let us know. Jump. 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 Jump is Jump. curse or haste. Jump. Haste. Oh, haste. Haste. Convoke. <laughs> Convoke. <laughs> accumulate. <laughs> yeah, accum accumulate. Accumulate. Yes. <laughs> yes. No. Wait. We're doing this times 120. Uh, Accumulator. Um, well, that's he, great. <laughs> he, get, he, get, he gets 132. Uh, let's see. What color do, do those I'm pretty have? sure if you add up all the numbers we have, it equals something divisible by Half Life 3. Confirmed. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm getting so I'm tired sure. of that thing, though. It's like so many people. You could be about. onto something. <laughs> <laughs> Every I, I, it was so funny when they were gonna talk about the uh, stream, uh, the streaming, well, the Steam uh, Cube or whatever it is, and they had like, oh, we're gonna have three announcements coming this week, and everybody, <gasps> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's gonna be Half Life, <laughs> <laughs> and nope, it wasn't. So I what was it? Later. The the announcements. Yeah, I got. I'm so holy shit. Seriously, like they announced their own console and their own controller and their own OS. Man, we're in a Feria uh, talk show. Huh. <laughs> okay, <Yeah>. let's <laughs> a console or just a PC architecture. It's uh, basically a PC uh, in a box. Oh, okay, okay. So that one I know. Okay, never mind. I thought I was just completely out. Yeah, GameCube is coming back, guys. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, I have too many windows. Uh, where did it go? Wait, I did a pop. Mm, Google Doc did go somewhere. Fair talk show. There we go. All right, but I actually like since we have Swag Beetle, should we just jump into uh, OP cards, OP decks? OP cards. Oh God. Oh. Like every red card is OP. Please no. Well, no. We okay, about, uh, let's save that for Imperial later. Disruptor, if you guys want. The disruptor. Oh, disruptor. Okay, let's start cards. Let's Ooh, do the cards okay. right now. Uh, disruptor, you said. Who wanna who wanna pick that up? Uh, you know the weird thing about 
I'm not sure if it's OP or not. There's one weird thing about it, which I don't really like, but it can't be fixed, is the fact that even if I counter the Disruptor with the building destruction, it doesn't give me any advantage whatsoever because my units still don't have the energy for that turn and my opponent's units will have energy, so it actually gives me yep. kind of a disadvantage. If Most of the time, I don't even want to counter it with, unit, with building destruction, even though that's how structures should be countered, especially if I don't have any units to move, right? So I think it would I would be much more friendly towards that card if there was a possibility that where when I destroy the Disruptor with an, a building destruction card, my units kind of gain energy in that turn. Right? Like, the, the effect goes back. That would be actually kind of cool. Hmm. And it wouldn't give you double energy because it's taken out all the energy anyway. Yeah, that's true. So it wouldn't be like, Wait, the oh, I'm just going to destroy energy? this and oh. then... Well, like, if you set up the card that on destruction it gave all your units energy, it wouldn't stack with the beginning of the turn because yeah, the beginning of the turn it would take it all it away. Mm. So that'd be an interesting mechanic, but that'd be a lot of text to fit in the little screen. It would also, like, I don't know, if they made it, if they changed it, besides anything but the cost, I think it would just be kind of useless. Like, if someone land renewed my Disruptor and it gave energy back, then I would just be screwed. Like, there's nothing I could do about it. But Nobody would run that deck anymore. Isn't that the case with all the structures? If they're destroyed, you don't get the effect. <laughs> yeah, but that's a production effect. Like, yeah. it's the same thing, I think. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah, because... It's kind of the... like, a like a production effect. Because the production stuff, you still need to wait for. Mm -hmm. You still need to wait for the production to happen, because that happens on your next... You'll place a structure, nothing happens until it's your next turn. Um, meanwhile, Disruptor happens instantly. It's an instant effect. Uh, sort of like, you know, you end turn and bam, you're... Um, uh, the, we talked the about this... The question is, does it need to get nerfed? I mean, I, I, I'm not sure it's strong it enough not. to get nerfed, but yeah. I do think that it's, uh, like, in my opinion, it's the most frustrating card to play against in the entire game. It just, you know, it stops you from doing anything, and it's really... Like, it, it's really, I think, off-putting to new players, at least, which is uh, kind of bad for the game. But is it really off-putting to new players? Yeah, if it's yeah actually, a lot of people complain about it. I mean, I personally, I don't think it's too strong. Maybe it should cost a bit more, Maybe it should cost, like, a three feria, three gold, or mm, something that like that. That would be insane. No one would play it. I mean, I don't know, but maybe four gold, two f I don't know. But well, what's um, the main goal of the card? Like, is it supposed to just make sure your opponent can't do anything for two turns, like a stall tactic? Or is it kind of like a pylon, which is to prevent them from attacking? You, you know what I'm saying? It prevents you them from collecting fairy as well if they're using harvest uh, creatures to harvest. That's, well, the goal is to stall for draws. The, the, the problem is... Yeah, the problem is stall you can draw the cards in the meantime. And if you have Radiate on the... On the map, then you just you know, <laughs> units are dying. It means it's obviously a good combo card. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. do much by itself. Um, but I definitely don't think it needs a nerf. Like I, I don't think it's strong enough to say like, no, this needs to be changed. This is the problem. But I think it's, I think it is really good. We talked about I, it yesterday uh, on a Mumble uh, at the end of my streaming session, and uh, uh, one of the suggestions were that you know maybe. I don't know if they need to rename or rechange uh, the text as much, but you know uh, this this whole like if it were more like like shackle square, as if when destroyed, you did get your turn to move, uh, then maybe they should look at the cost of it more, um, you know, because yeah. I don't know. I, I, mean, I had an idea. You you guys tell me what you think. Uh, maybe we should make the card. I mean, they should make the card. Um, that it doesn't only, not only it doesn't give energy, but also your uh, your creatures like uh, abilities doesn't work. So radiate won't work, for example. Oh, if you want to make it more powerful in the sense yeah. that 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 like, hey, nothing works. Why not? Like it it's like it's threats. like no production, but that's like the no most abilities. Frustrating thing when you can't do anything and he's radiating you. That's actually yeah, smart. And also, yeah, maybe True. Also, you know structures. Won't Interesting. Work. It, it would lose to every more... rush deck, though. Like, that's the only counter you have to rush the structures, is the Radiate Disruptor. Like, what else <laughs> are you gonna do? You don't run creatures, so True. it's like, well, you're kinda screwed if you don't have that. 
it's just like you gotta draw like a ton. Well, but I think still, I think that you know, change it still would stops make the game. You can do anything, and you can draw cards in the meantime. So it's still a stall card. Yeah, yeah I, I think I would like that because it makes it more even. It doesn't give one player uh, yeah. like an advantage. Like for example, in a red deck, you know, you use the radiate. Well, that's a clear advantage on your side, but that would only work. Like it's only an advantage if you have radiate. So making it that n like none of the effects would happen would kind of keep it. Well, I guess it would make it an an instant add to almost any deck then, because it's just like all oh, anti rush mm. card. I don't know. That's interesting. No, but like it's two gold, two fairy. If you use it, when you just like stall for two turns, like it allows your opponent to draw, and that's kind of bad in any situation if you're not running like production steps. The only reason it's so good in my deck is because you have to draw. It's my deck's basically a combo deck, like the structure deck. It's really card reliant, so you got to draw a lot, and then this it, it helps because there's radiate, and then there's production steps, and then there's auto collectors, so you're, you're basically just gaining like a whole lot of advantages while you're running the card. It doesn't work in any other deck, it only works in that deck because I have so many things going with it. It is true. So it just like makes yeah. the entire deck you're work. You're basically immune to the effect because of the structure of your deck. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, it's kind of weird because they, they stated that the game design, they want it to be where legendaries make an entire like gimmicky deck work. Yeah. And it shouldn't be like, I don't know. So they want it like this, and that's why I was saying are the new players are really bothered by it because the design idea behind Feria is that the legendary cards should not be in play uh, with the low-level players. Low-level players shouldn't worry about legendaries because they're mm -hmm. so hard to get there. You, you're not going to find them in the low levels. Well, you know, like level 20 is kind of low level as well. Yeah. yeah. And you and still maybe, have legendaries. Maybe the disruptors so... are going to start showing up there rarely. I don't know. I I mean, at least at least I mean the minimum they should probably make it cost I don't know four gold or more just to make it you know not possible to play it in the early game so easily. I just don't like how it's a human card and it seems to only have a great advantage in a red structure. In a deck. red, maybe it should just cost mountains. I don't know if it's. Yeah, I feel like it should be changed color. Like it doesn't really make so... sense if it doesn't help anything except for red. So I feel like just switch it to red, make it cost you know a mountain or two, and then, I mean that wouldn't well, make it but... well that and add the gold to it. But I don't know. Like it, it, it's kind of like a more of a technicality changing the color. Yeah, well, well, played do the that same way. But... Too much. No, I don't yeah. think you should do it. I mean, it just limits other decks that maybe you will be able to build a deck. Maybe other the decks will show up. I don't know. But ba Nick basically. When I said that I would like the card changed, I don't really think it's OP. I just yeah. don't like the idea behind it that you don't, that you can't do anything. I, yeah, it's. I mean, it's I annoying. Just, card, but I just. I think cards should have counters, and this one doesn't have one. We're done with this card, by the way. Right, right now, right all here. Because right. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> uh, all it's interesting, more, more interesting ones. Yeah, a really interesting card, really interesting topic, uh, really interesting opinions. But yeah, it seems from what I could gather from what I'm what I'm thinking, what you guys are saying is that it's a uh, it's a really hard uh, card to figure out how to change if to change it, like what to do that wouldn't just be really either bad or just weird. Um, with that said, Firewell is another structure mm. that people are having opinions about. It's a very cheap structure. It's a very, yeah. very so cheap wait, structure. It should just cost more. That's it. it should just cost I more. Think, I think two gold, one fairy is fair. Like, At least. I mean, like, it's like, really even crazy. Even the red player is saying it should cost more. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> even, even the guy you're like, singing, he's I like... Told them I told them to their figure of prosperity down one health, and they did it because I was just like, I was sad that my deck was a so crazy. A lot of people told them to do that. Counterplay. I was just like, yo, you should probably knock this down so it actually can get countered by land renewal. And they're like, yeah, it seems pretty fair because three health it was kind of crazy. Like there was no counter basically. I agree. Probably two health and make it cost two gold. One fairy is is a good change. That's I was good. so uh, yeah. I was so thinking about case yesterday when I was playing. Uh, like almost a copy of uh, Swag Beetle's deck, and I finally started realizing, oh, I know how to beat these guys. I was losing at the beginning, right? I did, I just did, I didn't play like I should. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, yeah, the firewall goes in the middle of the map to kill them, and not pick up fair. That's how you use it. That's how you use it. Yeah, it's way too cheap for what it does. You so know? salty. I hate that. That's like, like I don't have a problem with the card. But when it's like boom in the middle of the map, I'm like, oh my god, that just killed three units because the <laughs> land was there was no way for me to move my units. And it's Maybe like, he had oh. a disruptor as well. 
Yeah, but that's also file waste. I mean, or, uh, you know, barricade or yeah. whatever. Well, I think that's being creative with the cards. I don't think that's wrong. I think that's being creative with, with like, oh, I have this card that can do this and this. I'm not. I'm just not gonna use the collector at this moment. I'm just gonna drop it as a yeah. like you know and since defense. It's, cheap, it's not like I have to spend my resources wisely. It's just like, pfft, just use it. Well, I, I think that's a simple thought. We all kind of agree. We need to be like two HP and it needs to be both. one feria. Yeah. Oh yeah, two HP. I mean the cost. I don't, I don't agree on the two HP thing. That's just like the green power creep with land renewal. Uh, I don't I like would, it. I would say either two HP or um, at least three gold. I don't think both the changes should go. I think one of them should go. Both changes uh, would kind of make it like shit. Like well, I don't know. If only one of them, I think maybe like three gold, one feria. Yeah. Two gold is still too cheap, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess I guess the question is like, well, since most land room not. Land removal <laughs> is generally focused around land renewal. Yeah, too. Like, I don't really it. see many people running sabotage. I do, but that's because I know there are a lot of, you know, structures with three health and the land renewal plus the sabotage. Mm -hmm. Sabotage is just dirt cheap and I can use it to take out the small structures anyway. But I feel like most structure removal is based around the one HP or you have a card that does, you know, structure damage off power. So I feel like, I don't know. I feel like land renewal is almost like, or it, I feel like there's more of an issue with structure removal, like those kind of cards, than there is with the health as it is. Does that make sense? Uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is I think they need more structure removal before they start adjusting the health. You know what I'm Maybe. saying? You, you think there's true, too little true, structure there, removal? Is what you're there saying? There will be more structure removal as the cards are added. It could get yeah. balanced out yeah, as that, it is that, in terms of HP. That's what I was saying. It's a hard balance because if you run too much structure removal, you're just going to get destroyed by like a rush deck. You're going to draw like land renewals when people are like, rushing you, and then you just yeah. get destroyed. Yeah, and you're like, that's true. Damn it. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Um, okay, anybody else has a card they want to discuss? Uh, I, not, not as much as a card, but <laughs> what do you guys think about the beautiful combo of the green dragon with weathercock? Oh what's wrong God. with it? Oh. Well, what's basically wrong with that, or right with that, depends on who you're playing, is <laughs> you can actually charge in, attack with the dragon, and then move back away with the freaking cog, and no one can catch should... you properly. I think it should move a unit, not based on Ridiculous. its movement, but based on hexes. Move yeah, a it unit should by one hex. based on hexes, absolutely. Because then I... you can like, charge five yeah. across the map, but... It's just I... silly. I'll be honest, I don't even run Weathercock in my, in my green deck. Like, I used to run it, and it, I don't know, I just didn't like it. And I'm not running it anymore, so I don't care if, you can, if someone nerfed the card. Maybe it should get nerfed, but I don't feel it's too strong. I guess it's a combo that doesn't happen very often, so you guys may not actually have an opinion about it yet. I oh, I, ru I run... It's just that it's energy. Like, it's not like, with Might and Guts, I would say that that is okay keeping it based on movement as opposed yeah. to a hex because it costs more but i mean the weather just costs like an energy Something. and it's like energy now i get charged two times two it's like i i, I don't know i just really like the idea of m making it move by hexes because hmm. it, it keeps the impl it keeps the gameplay combos intact without making it abusive with charge units yeah it's true in before human charge deck with weather <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, I I mean in my green deck I run the weathercocks, um, tiki songs, and dragons. It's it's beautiful. It's you really know good. what's up. <laughs> I know what's up. It's it's like you know if I if I if I have a dragon on my starting ha starting hand I'm happy. If I have a weathercock and a dragon on my starting hand and a harvester I'm like laughing madly. At the opponent who will die. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's like that's what happens. That's that's just funny. Um, um, move in, kill, move out. The best units to, to start the game with in green, in my opinion, is first one. Just insane. I love that card. I love that card. Mm. It's, it's insane. insane. So, so is that card first weird? First one should cost four gold and not three gold. It's too cheap. Yeah. yeah. What's I, so I, good I, about it? Because. <laughs> I it's a worm. I screwed when I find it, when I draw him in the late game. So mm. yeah, I mean, okay, in the late game it's not that good. But if you start with the, um, you know, if you're opening end, you can. I guess you can. You can do a lot of stuff. You can either rush really, really, really quickly, or you can go two directions and get two ferry spots or three ferry yeah, spots. Yeah, actually, going two directions sounds 
Mm -hmm. It's hard to beat. <laughs> with that, really with that card, it's guaranteed two Faria spawns. And then, like, even late game, it's not that bad if you're running Tiki Savage, because it's just a free, like, buff for your Tiki yeah. Savage. It's like three gold. It's, it's not that bad if you're running three Tiki Savages. It's just, like, it guarantees you two Faria spawns against, like, any deck that's really good. Especially with green. Uh, no, I, I think maybe it should cost four. Like I love, I love the card. I'm playing green, so I'm not biased or something. But I think it should cost four. <laughs> you're totally biased. <laughs> well, I guess at that point, if the meta is shifting towards you're placing a lot of land, wouldn't that mean that the counter to that would be adding land removal? Or yeah, like the 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 red red events that take away prairies and whatnot. But I guess that wouldn't work because it is a forest. Yep. But it's a forest. Would, would the instead of nerfing that card because there really is no need to necessarily nerf it, would would a good strategy be to add some cards that can remove you know lands with a type on them or something? Or uh, you know, the funny is there even thing, a need to counter it? The funny thing about land renewal and uh, run land removal <laughs> is that land removal is good against decks who don't have too much terrain. Decks yep. that have a lot of terrain actually have that terrain really cheap. Yeah. So you're paying money for land removal, whereas their terrain is cheap. So they are actually fine and you are falling behind economically. The land removal is actually good against things with not too much terrain. Which it's is silly. Like yellow. Wombo combo decks. <laughs> Wombo combo decks. <laughs> oh gosh. We're going there. Wombo combo decks. Wombo combo I used to run a gravity <laughs> shift. And then the gravity shift would be really good when I got boxed in, or when like I was going against a wombo combo deck, and I would just kill their two deserts with it. And that was like the most hilarious oh, thing. Oh, nice. oh yeah! Nice. Back when it costed four deserts to get a nightmare. Yeah. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm um, we should have had a list of more OP cards, though. Uh, oh, yeah. I know Tiki, one we Tiki need. Ambush. I was just gonna say that. I, I was just gonna say that. I was just gonna say <laughs> that. Ambush. Tiki ambush is obviously not anything wrong with. Uh, so we're not even gonna discuss it. Now, obviously, <laughs> obviously, Tiki Ambush is a topic as well. Uh, do you want to go there now, or do we want to try other other things? Uh, I Unless think we, we have are another card. warmed up. Okay. Okay. Uh, Tiki okay, Ambush. Who, wants to, who wants to start? Okay, I don't want to start. Oh, I, can <laughs> I'll, start. I can start because I'm not talking much. I don't want to add a quotation around this whole topic, and we should we should focus on on logic <laughs> and and not your deck is bad, so it shouldn't beat me because that's not good. Yeah. No personal okay. insults. Okay, so let's go. Who's gonna, who's gonna okay, I, 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 I can, I, we'll, I mean, all be civilized, I don't have, myself. I mean, okay. I'm gonna just say my opinion about it, like, cause I, I don't, I am one of those, I'm gonna be in the camp here that don't think it's, like, much wrong with the card. Uh, I'm actually think like, for, cause I'm not even, I, in my green deck, I'm not even running it, but right now with the meta as it is, it's really funny though, when I'm playing, and I just drop a forest in front of my creatures, where where that's the only land bridge uh, with to my opponent, and he's in chat like, "You want me to step there, huh?" And I'm like, just smi you know, smiley face, because I don't have it, I don't run it, and he's like, Meh, "I'm not gonna step there," and uh, that is funny to me. But uh, what is it? It's one goal, one feria, uh, and I just think it's a def feria. to me it's a defensive card though, because uh, you know I when I used it, I used it a lot when they stepped into my forests, um, and obviously. In a mirror match against the green, it's powerful because there's a lot of forests and everything spawns in a freaking forest. Uh, that is when the card is really good and maybe borderline good or too cheap. But uh, it is definitely too cheap, 100%. I would I, agree with too cheap. I, I don't think I don't think it's too cheap. I, I'll tell you what I think the problem is. The problem is um, you guys remember Ancient Kappa before the nerfs, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. It was like uh, four gold, two legs, and uh, you can basically play it on, on turn two uh, or three. And then, when I mean, in lake versus lake, whoever got Ancient Kappa first, if you got it early game, you could just snipe the opponent's um, harvester, and then you pretty much, pretty much win the game. So they changed Ancient <coughs> Kappa, but they changed it in the wrong way, in my opinion. They just made it more expensive, which pretty much made the card crap. They should have changed it in some other way. It's still good. But, but n never mind right now. So Tiki Ambush <laughs> is the same way in green versus green. I mean, if, if someone is playing it and, uh, I mean, he gets, gets it early game, you can just snipe your harvester and you pretty much lose the game. So wait, 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 wait! I, I'm not finished. I know, I know what you want to say. So, a good, a good way. Uh, there are a few 
I mean, a few ways to change it. One way is to um, make it cost more, which will make it a really bad card and no one will run it ever. And that's not what we want to do in good card games. The good way is just to make it um, not play. I mean, it shouldn't be playable on uh, another, I mean, opponent's forest, unless you have a creature nearby, for example, it's someone, someone uh, made that, that su suggestion in the phone, which just makes it a really good defensive card, which it's what it should be, in my opinion, and it just doesn't break the, the game in green versus green. So that's probably what, I mean, I think that's the best change possible. I mean, there are other changes, you, I mean, you can do, but they just won't be as good. I and now, agree. yeah, okay. So I know, uh, Casey, if you had a problem with, uh, you said like, uh, Rooney Flash is, it's, is the same. But the problem is, it's not the same because it costs a lot. And it's still amazing, Rooney Flash. And it should be amazing. I mean, it should cost a lot because it's amazing. And Tiki Ambush, if it will cost more, it just it will be shit. So there's really. No Sorry. What? No, okay. Well, no. Well, you're saying like, oh, well, if they increase it, then no one will run it. Well, no one is already running it. Like the point is, is that no one really uses it anyway. But the few that do, they get away with wins because they tiki the the harvesters. But I I don't know. Like I understand that, in or changing it to be next would keep the keep the you know the gameplay the the style of it intact. But I feel like the the goal of the card was to be if you are in my forest or in a forest you will have problems and not necessarily like if you're close even though the card does have like you know creatures in it so to it logically reasoning it would it would be things are next to me let's let's use tiki ambush well, I, I think I don't know. people people are still <laughs> running it uh, first of all people are still running it so not yeah. like everyone's not running it but i mean even if you are so worried that no one will run it uh, if they change it then I mean, you can always make it like cost two feria and make it three damage and and only on your forest or, or something like that. I mean, I would it like should that. change somehow. That's yeah, what and I'm I, I definitely think it should it should have a cost increase. But mm. the the point of the, okay, when you're when you're balancing a game, when it comes down to a clone match, by default, a clone match means that there will always be something that will be done first, that will give one side an advantage that is hard to come back on. Like in almost any game, if it's League, two champions, whoever does the most damage first by doing this ability or whoever gets the level first, I feel like in a clone matchup, it isn't a safe, logical place to balance a game unless clone matches are going to be the way it's going to be played, if that makes sense. I do think clone matches show a lot of problems with a color, specifically towards Feria. I think in a clone matchup, you really see where some strengths lie within a color. But I don't know. I just think a cost increase would keep it from sniping harvesters, which would eliminate that problem. But <coughs> in Sorry? my opinion, it's like, okay, so it kills harvesters. Well, what harvesters have, you know, two health that can be sniped that early? There's really only a few. And they only happen in a specific situation, which is, you know, if I think it's if you go first, you get the ambush. If you go second, then you can be sniped. But and I understand that in a competitive green deck, you know, you have to run efficient cards, which would be the weak ones. But I think, you know, a weak harvester that is susceptible to Tiki Ambush is a high risk, high reward. So I, I don't know. Yeah, like, but, but you could I, also I do say... think they should. I do think it should be changed. I just don't think it should be only if things are next to it. And and I know that that makes logically sense, but I feel like increasing the cost would would fix the issue at least temporarily, and then after that we would come back to it and say, okay, is that still a problem? I just I just don't like changing a card just because it's like, well, this is annoying. Let's change it. I think that's really fast. If that makes no, sense. it's not because it's annoying. It's because it's really good in green versus green, and it shouldn't be only good in that matchup. I mean, that's the problem. And also, but I think it's I good mean, in uh, the other matchups. Yeah, it's okay, kind of but, but okay right in other matchups, and it's extremely good in green versus yeah. green. So it's it's yeah, just a huge disbalance. That's because in uh, in no, in all three matchups, it's used defensively, and it's an okay defensive card, right? Yep. yep. But in green yep. versus green, it's, it's suddenly offensive. It's yep. suddenly a board control ability like Runic Flash, <laughs> except one fairy only. What the hell? This is just like completely not how the card should be played. It's supposed to be something like 
you go into my forest and get ambushed by tikis that are living in that forest. That's how I understand the card. But someone is spawning unit on their side of the map. They shouldn't be ambushed. In my it's opinion, the rebels. It's the rebels yeah. in I, the I forest. <laughs> I agree that it sh you shouldn't be able to snipe across the map, which is why I think you know a cost increase would fix that problem. Because really, I, the only problem is when you snipe. But I think but making it in your forest problem. only is the fix that needs to be. To but happen, then in the late honestly. game, you would also be able to snipe units from any forest. Whereas if you made the card work only on your forest, you would actually ensure it is used defensively, which would actually totally equalize uh, the the card's usefulness <clears> between <throat> green versus green and other matchups. Because the only difference between greens versus green and other matchups is that the forest exists outside of your territory, right. which would be fixed. If yeah, but I think, what, I mean, what, case what, what card? Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I mean, I, I agree with you that uh, making it cost more would be a solution, but would it be the best solution? I don't think so. I mean, I think changing it to only your forest would be a better solution. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I just don't like that it... I just think in a balance like this, when you rework a card, there has to be a really strong reason to completely change it. The devs have said they don't make crap cards. Like, they had it with very specific mindset, which is why I was trying to ask them, like, well, what is the specific goal of this card so that I'm understanding their point to see if that point agrees with why I don't think it should be changed, if that makes sense. But I think a cost increase would temporarily say, okay, we fixed the solution. Is that okay? Is it now, you know, did, did it fix the original problem that is, you know, Oh gosh, my brain. Okay, I just think a cost increase first, then see if there is still a problem. If there is still a problem, then a rework is in order. But I just think a cost increase is the safest balance before you start to actually the, the go one, into the one. What is the purpose? What is the purpose? Devs were thinking. I don't know. I mean, that's when, I, mean, I guess the you... question to Martin and Jim. I wish they were here. God damn it! I think they're in right? the convention. That would be so it's great. Not, it's not supposed to be an offensive card. It, like they stated that they wanted it to be defensive. And then, like, I, I'm pretty sure they did on the forums, yeah. from what I've read. If they did, then I guess the rework that you can't use it on enemy forest is is aligned with the purpose of the card. Yeah, it would also would make uh, it would make like land grab decks better because then if it only, mm. they, that, that would be one of the only places where it could work. Just like put a lot of forests around them and then just tiki yeah, ambush. Wouldn't that also counter the tiki as well? If you play a conquest deck, I can't be tiki even in a forest because he doesn't own that land. That's true, but like, if then that's not, the counter to the tiki. It's hard to like balance. I mean, it's already it's three HP, a really good so card. Doesn't care about the ambush. It's really, it's a really Most good offensive yeah. card. So I mean, it shouldn't cost more and be less of a good defensive card. It's yeah, just exactly. Be changed, it it won't be offensive. Defensively. That's all. I think the card mechanic is cool. There's just you being like used defensively is kind of makes it ridiculous. <laughs> Like, if it was defensively only, I would play it still. Like, the card's yeah, really cool. funny. Yeah. It, I mean, and that's the only time I've used it, except for the video that I posted, which apparently sparked all of this. But <laughs> the only time I've used it is when people come into my forest, and then it's like, okay, I'm going to get you. But obviously in the forest matchup, like, yeah, I can snipe his harvester. But, I mean, unless you're playing a green harvester on a forest on that turn... I can't snipe it because the smart person moves that harvester off the forest and doesn't place forest underneath it because it doesn't need it once it's spawned. You gotta like, spawn it on the forest, though. Well, and that's why I'm saying in that, in that specific die. moment, then Tiki is definitely overpowered. If I can just take your manga, the you know the turn you play it, then that 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 is a problem. I agree that that's a problem, but I think a cost increase would fix that problem. But, but okay. I, I but I think if the dev, oh, I'll put it this way: if the dev said it is supposed to be used this way. So we're going to rework it. Then I have no issue. My but issue was like, I don't think it should be reworked unless there's like a specific logical, like 100% this needs to be reworked. Because I, I personally don't like reworks. Like, I think if it's put in the game, it was put in for a reason. And, and that shouldn't be changed unless there's like a significant strong reason to change. That's true. And if you can change it with cost, then I think cost is a better approach than reworking. Because then it's like, well, I have a problem with this, and here's my reason, so it should be reworked. And then and then reworking becomes a simple all the time yeah, thing. But, but then wh why would you change Agent Kappa? I mean, it was a problem. Why not just leave it there? It was intended. I think that happened know, before to... him, though. But then, I mean... yeah, that, that was before me. Well, it was it was when I was watching is when I started that. But the cost increase and now and now there isn't that problem. It's not about yeah, the, cost no, no, the, cost fix the problem with Oaklings with Sagami Hunters. 
that are Sagami Hunters are actually cool cards, except they get ambushed when you summon them. <laughs> yeah, and there we go. <laughs> would, would not fix that. In fact, if you increase the cost and increase the damage, a lot of the forest cards would be unsummonable if opponent has Tiki Ambush, because it would just get one shot after the summon in the late game when you're trying to summon units on the field. It would just die. Well, I don't. I don't think it should be damage ambush. increased. I mean, no, if, definitely if, not. If, just if it just was increase the cost. Three, and, yeah. Then. I mean, but if you just um, increase the cost and do nothing else, then it's gonna be good only offensively because it's just too expensive for a uh, constructive defense. I don't, I don't really agree with it being like a runic flash though. Like, I don't know. I, they already have a card like that for red. Like, green doesn't need a card like that. That just makes it kind of boring. Yep. I think defensive only should be cool. Yeah, mm. defensive only should be cool. Yes. I, and, I, uh, I'm for the just cost increase uh, to see how that will change um, first, but. Yeah, you I guess, well, I guess my mindset is, I'm, I'm coming in the mindset from the thread, <laughs> and the thread had a lot of things that are not necessarily being represented here, so my mindset is, is not being logical, yeah. if that makes but, sense. Uh, I think, I think <laughs> we, we kind of, no. We had to, we we said, had to touch we it. Said everything we yes. To uh, we should talk about the colors and the current state of the colors, because mm, that would be interesting. Of the colors. That is a good, good idea. Uh, let's do that uh, tomorrow when let's I wake up. No, <laughs> we're gonna do that. Sure, why not? Um, the colors. Uh, let's start oh, with uh, swag. You're playing red. Is red OP right yes. now? No, I don't think it is. Some cards are very, very cost efficient, but I think it kind of, the red deck kind of needs it to compete with rush. Uh, right now, snake the basilisk is really, really good, and people don't realize that. Like, they they're complaining about like disruptor and stuff, but I've like took out disruptor in my deck, took out like the death clock, and I've started playing like basilisks only and stuff <laughs> and i've actually won more than with my structures deck so that's like a really interesting thing and then i don't know they have some really really good cards and then like gold silk's really good if people don't do anything about it and then trial miners are pretty efficient fire wisp is really good um but all this is just needed like radiates just a really strong mechanic and i think it kind of needs it because red kind of struggles with rush and then yeah it's it's really just the defensive play style which i like a lot a lot of removal cool mechanic i like it I like it. So red so is not OP then. Rush? <laughs> I don't think it's OP. Not as many people play it. Like I don't know. I not many, not very many people OP. play it successfully either. It, I so would it's, say it's P. It's power. Yeah. yeah. I it's, think it's pretty balanced. I don't know. I don't think it's amazing. But yeah. did, don't you have like an eighty percent win rate? Like is that my what people are saying deck? on the forums? Yeah, on, it, it was actually near before before they nerfed it. It was near like ninety five. I was like fifty four and three or something. It was kind of crazy. That was back when figure was three health and I had prayers, so I could just instantly. <laughs> I think the people. problem is swag beetle. I think the problem is swag beetle. I think he needs to be nerfed. I'm like, pretty good well, at that. The, the, what I've seen with the deck and what I've analyzed from watching is that the strong the reason why it's so strong is because he plays all structures and then plays counter creature events so he wipes the board yep. and since it doesn't affect you know structures he's perfectly fine he can then do whatever he wants so but i don't know i think if a deck is winning 95 80 percent of the time that it's not op but that's definitely not balanced hmm. at least in but, my yeah. opinion but statistically it, it should be around 50 if it's 60 40 or 75 you know that, that's more balanced but 80 but, you 95 know, all the, all the good players are winning uh, at least like 80, 70 it's or 80 true. Someone, of someone next to Swag Beetle could have the same win rate with something completely different. Yep. Yeah, also, I, I mean... And I agree. I, I just think that at that time, that deck should be looked at as well. I just think if, <laughs> if, if you're winning that much and playing, you know, 100 games and having 80% win rate, I think that that says something about the deck. I think the I'm problem... Pretty sure, I'm yep, pretty sure go ahead. Leon, like the, the first ranked player, he wins like at least ninety percent of his matches, and he's playing mono blue. And I don't think mono blue is even close to being overpowered. So, I mean, I think they're just good players. That's all. Yeah, yeah. Also, you need to consider how the meta game works. The structured decks are kind of fresh, or at least they've been kind of fresh. Let's say a week ago. So when Swag Beetle had his sickest win streak, most people didn't even know how to play against structured decks. They there was just like this new thing that nobody knew how to beat and then people are gradually gonna learn how to play against it and the win rate is gonna balance itself out to some degree so maybe balance is okay but people's skill needs to catch up yeah as to how to counter it uh, people that's... used to not run land renewal yeah yeah I mean, that's interesting nobody ran land renewal. 
and that's interesting. The whole thing it. with metas, because I what I've seen in this game in the short time I've been here, uh, in the short time the game has been playable uh, in in beta now with Kickstarter, uh, is how quick. Uh, I mean, they've been balancing the game quick, and this is another topic we'll get into, I guess. But meta game, I mean, the meta of games usually, I mean, it takes time for it to mature, to grow, to change, to mutate, to evolve. Because uh, usually you see like, oh shit, this guy is using this super powerful thing. And then maybe you see a morph people start using that as well. And I think at the moment the player base of this game is might even be too small for us to see the big swings in the meta. Uh, whereas if we had like a million of players, uh, then we would have like a hundred thousand yeah. players right now playing the structure deck, and we would be like, oh my god, maybe it is OP, like because everybody's using it, and the top one hundred is all structures. Uh, but at the moment, so many people are experimenting. It's beta. We're having fun. Uh, people are doing their thing. Because I don't. I don't run into that many structure decks, uh, to be honest. Uh, so with that, I'm not sure that it's like a problem or that red is a problem, uh, as some people suggest. Um, yeah, so yeah, I, don't know. I agree with Joyful. I don't think though. it's OP. Like I really don't think it's OP. I just think that there's very few decks that can have a solution to it, regardless of playstyles, whether it's rush or pushing for late. When you can harvest like what 15 gold a turn. Not very many decks can compete with that because other decks have to grab Feria, they have to do other things. And since you can just wipe the board, if I take five turns of resources to put, you know, powerful stuff down, you're just like, double fire, gone. Like, it's just like, oh, well, that's five turns of resources. I don't have an economy like you do. I just think there's very few options in the other colors, which <clears throat> makes, in my opinion, red stronger, or red structure stronger, if that no. makes sense. I, I think makes... that, I mean... Right now, the deck, structure deck seems very strong, but, but to be honest, I mean, I, I've been winning pretty much almost every time I played against it, except maybe when I played against Swagbitter. I mean, I'm not sure I played against you too many times, once or twice. I mean, and that's just because he's a really good player. I mean, the problem is, our, I mean, if a really good player plays the deck, is it too hard? I mean, is it too good? That, that's that's I mean what should be uh, discuss, discussed, and I can't be sure about it unless we give it more time. I mean the devs have been amazing about balancing so far, but in this at least in this uh, specific topic, I think they should give it one more week or two just to see if it's really too good or is it just a really good player. I agree. I agree. I'm not. I'm not even running structures anymore. I just run like yeah, a I gold know. rush. And I saw better. that. What? The hell, what? Man? what? What? No. No. We just invited you for the structure talk. What the hell are you doing here? <laughs> I'm just playing red now. I do, do want to ask like a question though. Like, okay, so you have a red structure deck. You played it a lot. You had very successful. What was the things that beat you? Because. I mean, there was. I saw that the forest worm. So rushing the red deck really fast. It's really just well. rushing. Yeah. <laughs> rushing uh, dragons, emerald dragon. Dragons screw me up. Dragon. I was splashing morning hazard. <laughs> I was splashing morning hazard to deal with also, it. Also, submerge yeah. if you're playing water can deals. Submerge can crumble some uh, key fortifications that allow your units to break through. Then, that's how I won when I was playing water. And then when but I was playing desert, I, I won with conquest. So it can be beaten, especially if I was playing my conquest desert deck with Keldron, Keldron <laughs> stuff, and I was splashing uh, land renewal too. I was crushing structure decks. Too. I had some really fun games. It can be done. Yeah, and that's why I don't think it's OP. Like I've seen it lose, but you know, then again, were those people running a good structure deck? Do they know how to use it? I, I guess the the really only the tell is if you have like. Swag playing himself in in a multiple <laughs> situations. Yeah, you have to rush it. Basically, you're not gonna out compete. Like you're forced to rush it, and it's kind of hard to do that unless you know exactly what I'm running. Yeah. When the I reason see... I was losing was oh, people okay. already knew what I was running before I started the game. So everyone's like, I'm just gonna build straight towards you. <laughs> I'm like, oh damn it. And like yeah. basically, I have to draw to get the cards. I need to stop this, otherwise I'm gonna lose. Basically, uh... when I see someone playing mountain. <laughs> when I first notice a mountain, I'll, on my stream, I always say, okay, so I'm going to do one swing of Faria, and then I'm going to attack with this, this, and this unit. I already know. I'm, I, th I have these units in my hand. I either attack with them or I die. That's, yeah. that's how you play. You just David, attack with what you have. 
Bowie made a really good point in chat. Is he said the issue is you must rush it, and you have to have the correct hand to rush it hard enough, or you have no chance at all. And I think that is where the strength lies. I don't like. That's I don't true. think the deck is OP. I think it's too situational to beat. But I again, I don't think it needs to be changed. I just think that, I, it, like like we said, you know, wait a week, see if people learn how to beat it, see if it's really a powerful card, or if it's just people being like, oh, I surrender, I don't know what to do. So. I like it when I see someone put down mountains. I'm like, oh, he's playing red. Awesome, not a forest mirror. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of green players now. A ton of them. <laughs> green is, green is, yeah. Popular. Green yeah. is popular. And that's the thing. A red structure deck will beat a green if it gets pushed late enough because the, the red economy can beat green and you have cards that can deal with anything green puts down. I mean, even a few land renewals, unless they're like, you know, they take out a key structure, you're, you're, you're going to be decent, at least. Hopefully. It's, it's tops three re land renewal in the deck anyway. It's not more... I mean, it's... I mean, Starting hand, three land renewals. If I, if no. I, if I have 30-plus structures, he, he can only remove three of those. <laughs> you just got to take out the, the right ones. You got to kill yeah. the auto collectors. Yep. You got to kill the figure. That's all you need to kill. Oh, yeah, definitely. The figure. Awesome. All right, guys. Actually counterplay, too. So now it's actually good to just, like, land renewal instantly. Then you just, like, get out huge on like resource has, resource has anyone here played yellow a lot oh i've played yellow i've played yellow when yellow was considered dead and over nerfed and stuff <laughs> Whoa, so hipster. i played it for i played it for two days oh you mean yesterday okay <laughs> not yesterday. i played like five five, five days ago maybe huh it was after the warmongering nerf. It was when people just no one played yellow unless they were rushing like crazy. I played the deck with Keldron Warchief and uh, Warlord and stuff. I played, the, of course, the Desert Worm. Not nothing gimmicky like the Orb Rush. Just a straight up focused on conquest, some convoke with solid, reliable units and solid, reliable spells. And it actually worked. For two days, I've been winning more than losing, I think, yeah. uh, against stuff that was considered powerful at the moment. It was really nice. What you need to do is just play the Warlust that became good after <laughs> the Warmongering got nerfed, because Warlust hasn't been nerfed, and it's still fine. You can just kill stuff with your entire army. You get a damage buff, too. It's really nice. It's, it's actually frenzy. working. So yellow, how is that in the current meta? How wh where is yellow standing? It's extremely unpopular, but I believe people haven't been searching deep enough, and it's gonna get rediscovered. Yeah, yeah, I think people gave up on it too quick. Like I used to say, like yellow is the weakest color, but there's a guy in top ten that's playing mono yellow. Mm -hmm. So after I saw that, I was like, man, I guess it is kind of decent. People are just like, this car, this is too bad. I want to yeah, try I mean, like a conquest yellow deck with Windgate though, just like teleport conquest <laughs> into their lane. I think that would yeah, be like the most hilarious deck. I think that's exactly what happened. I think people were like, well, I can't win 100% of my games. Well, this color is useless. I, I can't play with this anymore. And then they moved <laughs> to green. Uh, I was on the camp that yellow is way too weak and it should get serious buffs. But uh, I agree. I, I, I said it too soon. I mean, I, I've seen some really good uh, yellow players. And uh, it should probably be explored a bit more. Maybe it's a bit too weak. It might be a bit too weak. But I don't know. Maybe I guess at that point, you start talking about Gosh, this I'm sorry, the delay, I'm just interrupting everyone. Yeah, but yeah. I guess I guess at that point the good conversation to have is well what is the goal of each color? Is yellow so supposed to be a you get a good rush, you win no matter what or is it supposed to be a consistent rush? Like you know what I'm saying? Is water, you know, supposed to be a consistent rush but it won't instantly win or in is yellow like, you know, the instant win unless, you know. Like do you get know what I'm trying I to say here? <laughs> I'm kind of seeing yellow as the deck with most powerful spells. The one that can hang back for mid-game aggression until they get spells that will crush faces, like Warlust. Mm -hmm. I, that's mm -hmm. why I'm seeing yellow. Not necessarily just 100% rush. Yeah, I've only really seen yellow. It, it, I've, the only time I've seen yellow is if it's splashed in with other things, or it's 100%. I mean, you build land straight for that orb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, I mean, I, I, again, I, haven't, I haven't. No one's really playing it. There's not enough data and and experience are playing with it to, or playing against it to see, you know, where its strengths are, which is unfortunate. I had the funniest game actually today on the stream. The first one I played, it was against a guy who had Windgate and the Morning deck with Imperial Assassin. He was changing time so I could never hit kill his assassin. I literally played an Arborea, a dragon. 
a a living willow next to his orb. I had forest next to his orb. I just couldn't kill the guy. He was too strong. He had a desert worm teleported in, kill, hit me for five with morning. Sunlight or whatever it's called. Yeah, I saw, I saw that. That was really funny. Imperial assassin yeah. was just poking me for two so damage. So I couldn't touch him. Killing you with friends. Uh, I saw it as well. But, so but he, if he would beat a, a red player on the ladder, he would just automatically lose. Imagine. Unless you would teleport in and kill vital structures, I don't know. No, I think you would just lose. I mean, like, fire flap and radiate, you just kill everything. Yeah, I have no problem. I, mean, I don't know. It, it would have to kill stuff after it teleported and attacked. So there would be a trade that already yeah. happened. Well, the thing is, like, Runic Flash kills almost every uh, single uh, yellow unit instantly. Mm -hmm. Like, it just stuffs it. Yeah. That's true. Mm. Boom. So that was yellow. Well, I then. guess that's I guess that's the question then. So if if red is the only answer to stuff like that, well, should those options be available to other colors, or should it only be red has direct answers for that yellow combo? Like you know you know what I'm saying? Should it be like more available, or should it be a counter? Is this in red counters this in yellow and nowhere else? I think there has to be a cycle of certain decks being good against other decks. Yeah, uh, red feels like the control deck in this game. Honestly, like that's how it I feel. It is. Mm -hmm. I yeah. agree. Yep. Yeah. And then, like, you have the other colors, and then red has answers for every color, I think, except for structures. Like, red doesn't have any good structure removal, which I'm trying to get, like, a structure removal card to come for red. That would be cool. Maybe with the community but, uh, card designer, the stretch yeah. goal. Everybody go increase yeah. their pledge 100%. Thank you, please. <laughs> <laughs> what is, yeah, the, what is it at points. right now, actually, since we just mentioned it? Is it still at 66? That's the um, last I saw. Let me check. It it's is... almost done. It's like 68, 69, or 68. Nice. Because before I went to work, it was like 68. Nice. It's 68. Cool. So close. So close. Yeah. Uh, okay. Are we okay. done with yellow? Oh, we're done with yellow. Uh, sorry, I was looking Kickstarter. Uh, yes. And then the next question, I want to keep that for last. Okay, green then. Uh, who plays green here more than I? I uh, play today a little bit. I, I know Casey play a lot of green. Yeah, I switched to green after water. Yeah. Well, water I wasn't winning enough at lower levels, so I switched because I didn't have the right cards. So I, I was playing. I was playing. Uh, I started like when I was leveling up, you know, with my new cards. I started out a lot of yellow, then went into yellow red, then a lot of red, and then that got boring. Uh, and then I went for green, and I have a blast. Green is so fun, and yeah, I don't know. Like I feel green is the the big monsters. Uh, it, they fit my play style because I, you know, I I loved playing red because it was really defensive, and I'm actually probably playing it wrong because I'm re still very defensive in my play style and in how I build to begin with. Um, you know, ju just being like, if they rush me, I'm just gonna defend until you're in a bad spot, and then I'm gonna put down some big stuff and counter you, or I'm just gonna you know wait for my dragons. Yes. I, I think green is actually extremely balanced right now. I played a lot of green. And there are a few cards that probably need changes. I mean, Emerald Dragon is a bit too strong right now, I think, maybe. And um, as I said, Forest Worm should probably cost one more gold. And maybe Tiki, Bo uh, not Tiki, Bo Tiki um, Song should cost one more gold, maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah. But yeah. overall, it's, it's Which one? Tiki? Balanced. Tiki? Song. song. Oh, yeah. That's One the more gold. That's a combination of Triton's Wrath and Knight's Praise for lower <laughs> than both. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Knight's Praise plus movement. If uh, if you yeah. move the Hey, it's Tiki weird. Song is nothing wrong, and it's it's nobody plays it. They're gonna they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna nerf it. They're already adding a cost to it, like on the forums they said that they would. And also for Dragon, I think they're lowering it to five health. So I don't think that's the answer to Dragon though. I feel like all the other dragons have a specific niche. Oh yeah. And then green is just a normal creature. Like no, he, yeah. no, he poops forests. He poops forests. It's very well, niche. They have, <laughs> they have drawbacks while green has yeah. a universally good thing. Yeah, it's, I really don't, don't like that. that. They wanted really the dragons don't. to be like a gimmicky like card that you have to make a deck around, but they made dragons so good that like every deck, every green deck has to run it because it's just so efficient mm -hmm. and it's crazy. I don't like. I, I feel, but like, what is the answer? What is a good niche besides making it cost a bunch of actions to move and to attack? Like, what is there that you can do to it besides nerfing it? Okay, health? suggestion here on how to change the Emerald Dragon. Shoot. Give it accumulator, and <laughs> then it doesn't gain energy unless you summon a unit. Oh, so you have to summon cool. units to stack up energy um, and then you can move. I what mean, the hell? Maybe, 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 it's a, 
<laughs> maybe make it a 3-5. Maybe make it a 3-5, but also buff its uh, ability. Maybe uh, when you spawn a forest, you can spawn one additional forest in any direction. Hmm. But it needs a drawback. Something know. that makes it suck, it but it'd be good at the same time. Maybe like that other green yeah. card that can't move uh, um, unless you do what? What is it you have to do with that? Maybe uh, until you, unless you system. pick up Faria. Maybe it can move only if you pick up Faria, but you can always pick up Faria. No, but uh, you know, and, spend and an Faria action to move it. Spend an action know. to move it, maybe. Spend an action no, but, to move but it. But if anyone cool. on your on your side picks up Faria, then oh, actually, spend an action. That's too, uh, actually too easy for green because they harvest fa uh, actions. Yeah. But it fits yeah. with the green playstyle, like because making it cost Faria is good, but most green decks don't have an excess Faria to spend, which could in effect be the niche because you're not supposed to have the Faria. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like making it like two actions or something like that to move. Two actions to move. Attack, not yeah to get an energy, you know. That's or maybe even three. I don't know. I I don't. I'm not like, you know. I haven't thought about. But it I mean, this, this is the thing though. This is the thing with the blue dragon. Like the that thing with the really... blue dragon is that yeah, you can only move it uh, at night, but you can still attack with it. Yeah. During the other turns, so if there's still creatures around it, you can still attack, right? So if you put it next to the orb, it still attacks the orb. Um, so and I, I don't know, like I don't want the tra the green dragon to just be sitting there waiting mm -hmm. for me to get the stuff I need to give it that Red Bull. <laughs> so maybe they should just fix the blue dragon so it's playable, and then every dragon is comparable. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, but. The problem is they don't uh, want all the dragons to be playable in every deck. Like, yeah. that's not what they wanted. But green is. Yeah, right, right now, green yeah. dragon so is... So that is the problem, actually. Right now, it's, it's the, one of the best creatures in the game. In it's super opinion. good. And if is not, there a way to have, like, it needs to be on a forest to eat a forest, and then it gets an energy if it's on a forest, or something along those lines, like, the, following the accumulator kind of thing. Because mm -hmm. the accumulator means it can't be used every turn, which is good. That's a niche. So I like that. But is there a way to make it more refined and more, like... If it's in a forest, it gains an energy to be used. So if you move it outside of a forest, it's like, well, now it's stuck. It's <laughs> <run out> of... <laughs> now it's stuck. <laughs> like placing land underneath aquatic. Unbearable words. Unbearable words. <laughs> yes, like. Whoop. Maybe you should make it um, like. Uh... Uh, David Boy said four or five forests to play it, but maybe... How many forests does it require right now? Is it three? But upping the Only cost three. doesn't three. give it a niche. Upping the cost just makes it more expensive. Like, the other dragons have specific niches, and I think that should yeah. be applied to the dragon as well. The green dragon. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can uh, only uh, on the turns you created a forest. Yeah, that is. I, I like that idea actually. Like, like that. you know, you have to because because uh, I mean be green is because no, it but green be. is always but creating still forests. Have the forest worms or the shrines or the uh, sentinels to make it cheaper. Ooh, 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 ooh. That that makes the forest worm. Very good. <laughs> Though, I'm, like, I'm talking about, is there enough hexes? Like, after at a certain point, there's not going to be places to move forward. So then, so don't play a dragon, huh? Land oh, yeah, you can run out of room. That's true. But then lumberjacks are gonna be better. No, that's no, uh, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. No, but seriously though, I mean, we're talking about as 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 far as I'm thinking here, uh, to move it, you can still attack, but to move it, you have to play a forest, right? And then that means that the Tiki Weathercock again is really good. The Tiki Song is really good. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I like it, but I still think it will be really strong though. Because you will uh, still they, be able to move if it. If they change combat completely, I think the game would completely change. Oh God, then placement would be a lot less important. Like, Notice right now, placement's hugely important. The important. I'm just reading, like, the, the chat. The chat is I don't know if he's trolling, trolling so or not. Quick. Who's that trolling? seems like Hearthstone mechanics where they attack back instantly. That's kind of like, That's I don't know. Kinda... Mm -hmm. oh, I mean, that just change the game completely everything. because... Nah. You know, revolves around who attacks first. Yeah, and yeah. the movement auto-attacking is very good. Ace would be way too good, I think. Haste would just be ridiculous. Print and heart. I, I talked about is that it will just make the game a completely different game, and almost all the cards will need a. Completely different Almost all the cards will need. Would need oh, okay, rebound, okay. I think I understand what he wrote. Let me just say this, because I I realize, because when I came into this game, I came from uh, Soulforge, where every every action right is like a battle. Like if if I hit your creature, it also hits me back with the yeah. same amount of strength that this has. So and when I started playing, I was like. Oh wait, what? They don't attack me back when I attack them? <gasps> oh my god, this game is awesome, right? I was like, oh, how, how cool is that? But it also does 
change the game entirely if they were. Like, holy shit, how much would you think about, I'm not sure I want to attack that one, because he can attack me back when I... It's, I don't know. I think the game is good as is. I seriously hope Print and Heart... I mean, I seriously hope they're not seriously considering changing that anytime. Ever. Yeah, print and hard. If you are gonna talk to the devs again, tell them it's not a good idea. In our opinion, <laughs> in fact, it, it would. I think positioning would not be such, so prevalent and important in the game if there was such a strike back mechanic on everything. Because now the thing is who attacks first, and that's positioning. And positioning is what makes Ferris so strategic. You have a huge map, which makes positioning so cool. That's why it's a board game, in my opinion. Like That's yeah. why it's such a good board game, is because it's a turn-based board game. Now, I manage to attack you, you take damage. Bam, done. Right? Like... Plus, there'd be no point to strike back. <laughs> yeah, really. well, strike back. Except for adding another power. But that, oh, yeah, that, that would be so true. bad. It that would was... be kind of pointless. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't want to see that ever. Like, no, no. Uh, that would make them way more shallow. I hope the devs watch the VOD when they get home tomorrow uh, and, oh, see yeah, this, be... and see this part where we're like, no, we all agree. We're five people here. Even a guy playing red. <laughs> right. Omri even left. <laughs> Ancient slumber. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's crying in the bathroom right now. He's, like, he's no, flipping this tables. Happen. <laughs> but I don't know. I think I think if they did do that, there would be other ma major changes that would allow that change to not be so dramatic, if that makes sense. But I still think it's a bad idea. I mean, I seriously, if they do that, they need to just they need to rework every creature's power yeah, and health, yeah. and it and would they'd be have to add, like regen or something. And all the bad the spells that change positioning are not. Uh, Whole... Be so useful because mm -hmm. we're still people... discussing it. What's the point of the art thing? It's a stupid idea. All right, let's just. All right. Just... All right. Uh, we have one more color though, blue. Blue, blue. I think it's 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 still. You know, there was this magical moment when uh, Martin played me when I was on the stream, and he killed me with a full-on aquatic deck for the first time in my life. I saw it's actually possible. <laughs> I playing, and for two days I was crushing people with Leviathan. It's actually I hated working. that. Like, I saw that. I was he like, Leviathan. Right. And then so I started seeing other people do it, because you inspire people. I hate you. It's <laughs> like, you know, and I, I like saw... That doesn't change because of what's good. It changes because of someone winning something on a stream. <laughs> yeah, it's the it's... Oh, he played this. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> That's why nobody is successful after watching my stream. That's why everyone ran structures. <laughs> well, and, and, and that's why everyone streaming. played water. Tornis was playing water, everyone was playing water. Then yeah. people started playing green, and I'm like, wait, who started playing green? I was like, oh yeah, that one guy. That who one guy. Green? <laughs> this was when I first started, though. But as yeah. to water, I think water has a lot of answers that people don't quite realize yet. For example, like a water versus green deck, like I played against this water deck. I don't know if it was good, but it worked. He had Order of Valor, and pretty much he would just infinitely buff that card and then jump it across the map and kill everything I would spawn. I'd be like, okay, six tiles away, I'm safe. Nope. <laughs> jump, jump. Like, jump, jump. <laughs> not, that he, not that you can do that, but anyway. I'm, I'm That's just funny. That's just funny. My point. But I think Water has a lot of answers that not necessarily that isn't necessarily being played at the moment. For example, yeah. water decks are all about that aquatic rush. But he was like, I'm going to sit back, build a bunch of Feria, and then one-shot anything you put towards me. Which is, it was pretty fun. I think I ended up winning at the very end, because I timed him out, but... <laughs> I think, I think if you don't tile correctly versus water, you're going to lose a lot of your games. Yeah, like, basically, true. you need to contest that aquatic collector. Yeah. Like, yep. Blue's whole game plan is to build out twice, and then have the aquatic collector go for the top two, and then Im immediately con contest the third Feria spawn. And then that way, like, you're never going to win against Blue, because Blue has so many cost-efficient creatures, so you're just like, well, I can't get this second fairy spawn. You're better off just, like, building the two instantly down, getting that one fairy spawn, than just going straight up. Because, like, the Aquatic Collector isn't going to be as huge of a problem as trying to deal with, like, the 30 Mochi Fellows and Swamp Worms they're able to spawn, because they're really cheap. It's just like, uh, there's no point. Yeah, exactly. So you might as well try to get two fairy spawns instead of only getting one. Yeah, I that's, remember. That's how I, think tiling should work. I remember first I think time. Blue is really, really balanced. Like, ah. blue is extremely balanced right now, and people should just, should just learn how to play against it. Yeah. Because people blue are rush is really, really mistakes. consistent. Like, it's gonna do well every single game. Like, there's no way that yeah, it's not gonna do well. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, it's gonna do well, but people aren't playing correctly against it right now. And if they would, mm -hmm. it would probably be you know. Much better. I think. I, think it's so I, I don't see any nerfs you can make to blue that will 
I mean, not make it really bad. That's what yeah, I'm everything in it's good. I mean, it's all about combos. I mean, yep. it's not about one card being strong. It's about using all of what you have effectively, and I think that's pretty balanced. But an interesting thought popped in my head. This is kind of going back to Ambush, but not really. Okay, so you have Falcon Dive, right? If they change Tiki to be one damage, but it could be played anywhere, making it basically a Falcon Dive, so to speak, would that I be... I think it should be defensive only. I don't know. I don't... Yeah. I, I, I mean, honestly, like, like the... we've gone over this already. I mean, defensive uh, only. Uh, we're gonna get a let's, banner. Let's, let's go back to blue. Yeah, yeah. we were talking blue. I don't want to talk about the salty Different. ambush. In fact, what I think happened <laughs> to blue, keep it, keep it is, alive. Is everybody wanted to rush blue and win everything. So when the blue rush got nerfed multiple times, people stopped playing rush blue. Forgetting that there's that there is actually a late game blue, there is a full-on aquatic blue that I was winning with for two days like crazy, with leviathans one-shotting every unit. There are many different blue styles that people don't really explore because they got stuck on rush. Okay, rush isn't working because it was nerfed, so let's play I don't know, uh, desert rush or forest or something else. <laughs> but there are many different blues that people haven't been exploring. Yeah, yeah. people want to play the meta. I mean, honestly. The the oh, blue I have problem one. with, the blue I have problem with is the for the one I met the first time, which was like I'm like, he's dropping so small creatures. <laughs> and then he drops some others and I'm like, wait, they're growing? Really? What the fuck is this? And I started reading the, the, the creatures and I'm like, holy shit, like so many small creatures that just you stick them together and they just like we buff each other, you know, and <laughs> and I'm like Okay, so the tsunami thing comes to mind here. My my trees are just flushed away. Like I, I'm like, holy shit! Like, how do I defeat all those creatures? Uh, I did not add a fire flap, um, because I needed to. So yeah, I I don't know. That, that is that is the blue I have trouble with. The rushing blue I usually do well with when playing green. Um, uh, because yeah, again, green is good. But um, yeah, I don't know. I like I like the blue player playing all those creatures. Uh. In, in combo, uh, I think that is what will make me try it out eventually, because I'm like, that seems so cool, like, I want to do that too. Have you I don't, I don't think it? enough people play the noodle bar blue, with like noodle mm. bars and That is so good Those though, like, great. someone That's, did yeah, that. I, it's really funny. I hate that. I, I tried to play it for a while, and I just, well, I didn't, it, it wasn't bad, but I lost more than, I mean, I, I should say, I should say, I won less than I am. With the regular. Yeah, that's true. When I was yeah, playing it, I had a huge yeah. problem with protection because my units had a lot of HP, but none of them could actually kill a basilisk. Oh, the snake is so good against blue. Like blue has no answers to the snake. Radiant it's so and crazy. protect. That combination is so mm. brutal against water. My favorite blue is actually Triton Warriors and Servants of Aliwa. These, mm. I want to base my blue again around these two, and then What's Flotka the Priest so that I always attack first. And then with Triton's Wrath, I always attack first. Like like you said, jump, jump, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> What's the jump, card jump. that has charge two and like something else? It's like a it's like a dude on a whale, and it's I've never Gabriel seen it. Order. Order. Gabriel Order. No what? It's okay. Gabriel, Gabriel Order. Order. Hold on. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. Okay, so that was played on turn. I think it was turn four. He played an aquatic and then played that as his second card. I had no hope. Like I, I played on no turn three, kind of like a manta rush. Yeah, you yeah. need to defend building terrain. Uh, but it was like it was so early. I'm like, uh, what do I do? I can't go for the second fail. It'll take me four actions to build the yeah. land to then protect. So I was just like, oh, what do I do? I think I just surrendered. I was just like, man, that oh. is strong. It was it was good. But like that's what I'm saying. Blue has options that that do so well against so many things. I just feel like people don't explore it deep enough. Hat pun. Water, <laughs> deep. Okay. I guess, I guess, but I, I don't know. I you just, just need to give us more time. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel people will make full uh, blue decks that aren't rushes, but they just they probably won't be as good. I guess. I'm. I don't know. I'm Rush is sure. just too consistent because it places pressure on the opponent to like deal with it. Yeah. Like yeah, and they I don't like draw it. well. I like the yeah. If they don't like have the cards to deal well. with it, they win instantly. It's so dumb. Yeah. I, I just don't like, like the style of Rush. Good. I just think that's the same thing with Red Structure deck. Unless you draw specifically to beat it, it's like kind of hard in the yeah. early first couple turns. I've awesome. seen the similar thing in StarCraft, actually, that the cheesy or rushy decks are usually <laughs> more yeah. consistent for the player who is cheesing or rushing. 
It is. Because it's the uh, opponent who needs more I, I, to show I more actually, skill to adapt and counter I actually it. don't agree. I mean, I've played StarCraft for a long time, and uh, playing safe would always be more consistent than Russian. Well, this, if life. you're skillful. <laughs> but you're good, so the changes. Because it's the new game. Well, I was watching. I was watching the tournaments, and there was a competitive player that did it for two out of his three games, and it worked. Like he beat the better player just by cheese. And the announcers were like, "Wow!" So we can talk about how good he is, but he didn't really do anything that was good. He just did the cheese. Yeah. So sometimes it happens like that. And it's yeah. like, and what they were saying is that you have to build to counter it. But if you build to counter it and he doesn't rush you, then you're screwed. So it's like either you directly counter or you directly lose. And it's kind of like, well, there was the third game and I think the guy won, but he had like insane mechanics that just blew everyone's mind. Anyway, what? sidetrack. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> All right, so, so we ran it's out of colors unless we want to talk human deck. Well, I think no one does human. It's uh, a real color. It's not bad, though. I think. <laughs> No, it I, has I no like color. It's a, uh, it's uh, funny. it's poop brown. It's, it's like a prairie. No. It's a prairie color. Is what it <laughs> it's is. It's a prairie color. <laughs> it's emptiness a color. God damn it. <laughs> so I, I tried. I, I'm not, a, I, I'm not as skillful as some of you guys at just making up decks and being successful. So I just tried yesterday for the funs of it uh, to just make something with uh, neutral cards. Uh, I lost three times in a row, uh, even though, I, and I modified it a little bit. And I was like, okay, let's try to run uh, this. Uh, Swag build structure deck, and that was way more fun. <laughs> oh, that is, it is incredibly fun. Well, Has anyone done a it. successful human deck? I did. I did. Yeah. It was based. It was with some mountains, of course, because you need what for a successful human deck. You basically need a lot of gold. So yeah. I got gold from the mountains, and then I had the archers, the knights, uh, the horsemen, and I had the. <laughs> Uh, Rude Scape Graces, who are, who are actually great meat shields. If you guys don't know, Rude Scape Grace is a 1 3 unit for only 2 gold. With it's curse. the cheapest meat shield ever. And it has yeah. curse. It has curse too. It can't, it can't collect <laughs> Faria, but you don't care about it because you use it as a meat shield and it's great to put it in front of your archer. So if, you, if he wants to attack your Scape Grace, he kills a worthless unit and then his archer, your archer shoots him. It was, I was crushing things with, with the deck, but then the Gold Silk Fairy got nerfed and I stopped playing it because it didn't have enough income to actually keep supporting. Basically, the human, human units are never as cost effective as the other ones, so you need to rely on having more of them. And I had more because I had the gold income that was insane. But you basically need to go for a lot of gold and you can make it work. Is that balanced though? Is the point of human to not be as strong as the other colors and it's meant to be a filler? I think it is meant to be a filler, okay. actually. Yeah, yeah, it that, feels that's, like that, it. That's what my point is. I feel like that's, it's not necessarily a color, but it's more of like a icing you put on the And table. that is why it's such a good, fun challenge for someone to make a successful human deck. Like, you know, just because, oh, it was not meant to be, so I'll, <laughs> I'll do it, right? Like, I hope someone does, like... If like, someone's like, a good enough player, yeah. they can do it. I I've even so, seen too. successful all event decks. They had like maybe two what? creatures on the board and just evented every turn. I was just like, oh my god, wow. I can't do anything. Seriously? Yeah. That is sick. Yeah. I mean, the, he, he has to collect Feria though. Yeah, well, he was. He had like two creatures and then he just <laughs> sat back with like three land and just, I was like, I'm building towards him. Place a unit, it's gone. Place a unit, it's gone. Oh, he destroyed the land, took out my creature. Okay, well, <laughs> it, was, it was fun. That sounds really awesome. Okay. okay. I, I want, can I say something? Yes, you can. This uh, Mr. Cubes, who, if someone doesn't know him, he says in the chat that maybe they should uh, double the like the numbers of everything in the game to make it easier to balance. So, for example, uh, ah. like Emerald Dragon Ooh. would be uh, 6 12, and then if you want to balance it, uh, let's say make it 6 11, which is like much less of a nerf than I think it is. Five. It's an interesting idea uh, because obviously, because wow. yeah. one of the first thing I, you, at least I reacted to when I came here was like, okay, so creatures are like, you know, a big creature is a a three five. That's not that much numbers, you know. It's like you know, and that's like a big creature to some. Like I, I was just actually blown away by the the power and health of creatures being not that super. Big, um, I and I love it. But then you but... do come from Soulford when they have a hundred HP, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, I do. But st I mean, I've been playing other games. Trust me. Uh, maybe not card games, but uh, uh, you know, and 
maybe not that many board games, but still other games, you know. And I, I just thought, I don't know. I ex I didn't expect like Soul Force. I expected that with 20 health, I expected you know maybe creatures going up to some some super creatures going up to like I don't know seven ten uh, power. But that is Clearly what I expected. You've never TG ambushed Might and Guts before. Oh yeah, never, never. Uh, but and then the, again, um, I, and I came from Magic: The Gathering and from uh, Shadow Era, mm -hmm. and both of these games have really low HP. Okay, but I like the higher points. HP because the the more numbers you have, the smaller you can be. For example, here's here's kind of what I'm going with this. Okay, so if you have creatures at three five, well, dealing one damage is a huge percentage of that health. But if it's a 612, one damage is a very small percentage. So it allows a larger area to move around with numbers. And without being like, okay, well, this card does 40% damage to every creature because every creature has one health, as opposed to, well, every creature has two health, now you're only doing 50. Well, I guess that was... That if was they do that, if anyway, you do that, though, if you, know you double, if you double all the numbers, uh, you obviously need to double the health of the player as well, though. Well, yeah. Yeah, so yeah of course. Double every number. number. So every double number. Double everything. Like so strike back and radiate, double everything. And so it can't like, hurt yeah. to do that. I mean, it's not going to change anything. It's just going to be bigger numbers. Mm -hmm. Right. But what I'm saying is that with the bigger increase, it allows you to nerf things. And Slightly. It, yes. it goes lower than one. And, you know, in this game, there's no point. There's no point five or point nine. But if you increase it to two, you can go to one. You know what I'm saying? It gives you a wider range to adjust numbers. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. at worst, nothing bad's going to happen. It's going to be the same thing. <laughs> but at best, it's going to give you new options to balance things. That's a really Actually, that's, a, that's a very good idea, Chris. I want to I, I wanna add something. Should. I want to add something to that, which is uh, the fact, I, I read this not too long ago, a dev really trying to point out uh, somewhere on the forum that's like, okay, we've been like playtesting this for like four years. Like it was, it was obviously about the board. Uh, more than numbers, but I'm thinking that they have maybe. I, I'm. We don't know until they say, but uh, maybe they have been playtesting the game for so long that they've come to the conclusion that this is the numbers they want to do. Yeah. But it is certainly a really interesting idea. Like it would be interesting to see what happens if they double everything. Even though I actually do like it as is, but yeah, it's it's. Yeah, I don't they, think yeah. it's needed. I just think it's like, hey, that's a cool. That's a, a cool idea. It's really something that if the devs have not ever thought about it and never done that before uh, on their playtests, then maybe they should at least look into it because they have a at yeah. least seven months, Private at servers. least seven months of yeah. beta, where they they could maybe internally, like or like mm -hmm. in a closed environment, maybe try it out to just see. Will this be fun, right? Do you guys see any problems with increasing the numbers? I mean, the only thing, the only problem I see is that is the aesthetic standpoint. It yeah. is well, aesthetically look ugly to be bigger numbers. Yeah, it might look ugly. I don't know. It, it might be an aesthetic standpoint. Maybe the yeah, biggest problem my mind should... comes up yeah. with is the the fact that it puts more pressure on single units. If that makes sense. For example, if you put out, I mean, the numbers would be the same, but it takes more turns to kill them. No, no because the no, numbers would be the Oh, the damage <laughs> will increase as well. We're doubling everything. My bad. Yeah, you're yeah. bad. But but what we'll oh, you know at the first like okay now we doubled everything and nothing happened right we're at the same spot yeah. as we were earlier. Um, but except we got more options. But yep. what happens then when they start balancing? Hopefully they'll do, get get it to a really good sp uh, good spot or place. But the th uh, what I'm thinking is that maybe we'll start ending up with some really weak creatures. Like I I'm thinking that maybe the early and late game will get like stretched. Like you will have you know end up with a spectrum of uh, creatures that are really 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 weak and some that are really 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 strong. And I'm not sure that's better. But that's only if they introduce new units, right? Because the existing units would be the same as yeah, they but were. Maybe they would change the existing units to, I mean, other values. I mean, if, let's say, I don't know, Forest War would be 1 2 instead of like 2 2, if you double everything, maybe it should, no. Yeah, so I mean, it it only if they start changing stuff, it could get really. Because the ratios are all the same, so technically the balance would be exactly the same. It's just there's more room to change things. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's an interesting idea. I mean, the devs should definitely think about it. Yeah, 1.2... Who was it who came up with this? Chris. 
Chris Cubes. Oh, it wasn't my idea. Cubes. It was uh, Cubes. Yeah. It was definitely my idea. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, point, <laughs> no. Point, point to uh, point to Cubes for this idea. I think it sound it sounds really interesting. Maybe there it's even worth a thread on the forum. Yeah, um, we, we really need to convince the devs to watch this VOD. Oh, they have to. Like, uh, they, I mean, they said they said they're gonna watch it. Woo! In a cinema! Good. Okay, so with that said, I think we should have a less than five minute break. Um, I need another beer. Um, and ready uh, to go. Are you ready to go? I mean, no, no, keep going, to keep going. Oh, but know. a less than five minute break. Like a less, because it looks good. Uh, Can we talk about 2v2 in the match? Yes, that's what we're going to do when we get back. Yes! We're going to talk about the right, one shot orb stacks, and we're going to talk about 2v2 modes, and all that just. And yeah, and I'm sorry. Okay, Swag has been a very quiet, but that's because I muted him. He's been talking. You did, just didn't hear it. <laughs> what? So, now Swag hasn't been speaking for long, and I think it's just because he we haven't let him. I'm oh, sorry. it's all good, dude. It's you guys are talking about green and stuff, so I was like, I don't play green, <laughs> so it's all good. I, I'm gonna give me just like to talk about. You're gonna have the first word when we get back, <laughs> Swag. And uh, while we do this, guys. Uh, I'll, uh, you, you guys, you guys can talk in chat on Skype, you cannot talk as they will hear you, just saying. Alright then, <laughs> alright then. So, so yeah, drink. mute mics, uh, don't forget to unmute them, I'll put on a track, and we'll be back in less than five. Muting, hiding, and see you in five. <laughs> Oh man. I would totally get something to eat, to eat, but I can't. I can make popcorn, actually. Oh, sorry, no.
Do, 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 do. Okay, we're back. We're just gonna... Oh, crap, I removed... Oh, my God, I just total failed. That went the picture. Oh, uh, I reserve all the derps. I reserve all the derps. Yeah, that was that was totally case of messing up. Whoa. Whoa. What have you guys done? <laughs> there we go. Oh, now I can see it in the preview. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go, so and now we're back. <laughs> still here. We're still here, we're still here. Uh, yeah. And before we pick up the next, to next topic, obviously this is the best time ever to follow this channel, because this, uh, I feel, will Shameless be returning. Plug. This will be returning um, here on Metagaming TV. Mm, awesome. And uh, we want to give big thanks to Kasev, though, because he started the ball. He started the ball on the forums, and then me, him, uh, great old one and joyful rogue sat down, had a meeting, and you know this is what happened. So it's pretty fun. You like it, Joey? Yeah, yeah like I'm it? losing my voice, but I'm oh having shit. Fun. That's because you're streaming too much before this. <laughs> <laughs> I was, and oh. I was screaming because my soldiers kept dying. <laughs> oh yeah, you're, okay. you're, you're, playing you're gonna rest in the mountains for two days. You're gonna have fun. I will. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So. With further ado, the one-shot orb decks. Uh, who, want, who wants to pick that up? Like, are we gonna start with the yellow one, <laughs> or are we gonna start with the green one? It's yellow green. It's both of them. Yeah, isn't it? I think it's, it's the green. mechanics, not is it, the is color. Is it? Is it? Oh, is it a combo? I haven't met it that much. I I can tell. Okay, I can start by saying what happened to me because. Uh, it ha okay, two things has happened, two very different things. One guy, I was like, I'm winning, I have five creatures around your orb, like, you get nothing. And, well, he had a creature or two, and he dropped a Vault of Torment, and I was like, I misread it also, I failed as I usually do when I stream, because that's, that's what I do, I'm really good at that. And then, I'm like, oh, so, obviously, when I kill your creature, you're gonna take damage, ha <laughs> uh, which it didn't do because it obviously only kills the opponent's uh, health when you kill the creature. Um, so I killed this creature, and I was like, oh, I misread it. I'm going to kill it next turn. But no, no, before my next turn, he drops two more, Vault of Torments, Fire Flaps, and that neutral freaking card that also, f like, Fire Flaps everything. And he did, like, he did, like, 21 damage to me, and I was like, Okay. <laughs> like, yeah, what what, what the happened. fuck just happened? Like, I, I, I clapped, I typed, well done, I'm impressed, like, I could not be mad at that. And then, the day after, or a few, two days after, I played a yellow player, and I was doing okay, because he rushed me and I defended, and at, at a point he, he has that Shaitan Demon out, it's a 3-3, it can teleport, it has curse. Um, he... Uh, he buffed it to seven, uh, oh. and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Mind travels it one hex away from my orb, uh, which is seven damage. Moves it to hit my orb, which is another seven damage, and then seven damage and to the orb. And that's 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 twenty. That's also twenty one damage. And I was again. Divide by three. Like I was just like, okay, this is happening. Holy shit! Let's talk about this. Who wants to start? I'll start. Awesome. I have oh, the same opinion. Oh, wait, on wait, this. wait, 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 we promised that. that oh, we did, well, we did promise Swagbeal. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay. Swagbeal okay. go. Okay, so okay. I've run into these decks uh, a little bit. I've played against them like 10 times, I would say. <laughs> um, I've lost like once. Basically, the, you just have to block. You have to chump block your orb. And you always see it coming because they just like start drawing like a madman. They start drawing into 10 cards every turn. They just throw away everything. They just collect fairy all game. Like, it's kind of easy to see coming. You just, like, space your units correctly and put something in front of the orb. And then after that, it's kind of beatable. But, of course, the first time you see it, you're just going to get stomped because you don't see it coming. <laughs> and then after the, every time after that, you're just like, oh, I know what you're doing. And then you just, like, set up the counter, I guess. Uh, the decks are really fun to play against, I think. Like, they add a new mechanic to the game, which is cool. Like, you can't just nerf a combo deck out into oblivion just because, like, one person's playing it, I think. I mean... Yeah, it is complicated. It doesn't so. happen every time. It does not, and it is very gimmicky, in my opinion. Uh, I think it should not be nerfed. That is my opinion. I think it should be there. It should be something that people can do. I mean, holy shit! Why does he need fourteen fairy? I don't know. <laughs> then you wish him. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna <laughs> yeah. say, just wish everyone put wish in your deck. I think this deck isn't isn't like good enough. I mean, it should definitely shouldn't be nerfed. Um, the thing is. 
I mean, there will be two groups of people when they encounter this deck. They will either be pretty good players or at least knowledgeable players, and they will say, okay, I, lo I lost this now, and now I know how to beat it, and next time it's going to be, you know, fun thinking game, just play around it and see who can win. And there will be the group of players who, which are in like every game who say, that shit is seriously OP and it should be definitely nerfed and I'm removing my pledge from the game until it's nerfed or whatever, you know, people will complain. So uh, the question I think the devs should ask themselves is if they prefer for, uh, you know, higher level players to have more options and enjoy themselves or should they be more worried about uh, players who will just uh, be extremely mad about this stuff and decide not to play the game. And in my opinion, it should be, uh, of course, I mean, higher player, higher level players should just have more options. But it's a decision that devs need to make, and not us. So but what bad. is what is the counter to a one turn twenty one orb damage? You just like block everything, all your hexes. You hardly build any hexes. I mean, just don't build any hex. You don't need make one line to the enemy. He doesn't have any strong creatures, he doesn't have any way to do anything except this combo. So just go straight to him, make all your lands uh, filled with creatures and buildings, and that's it. You win the game. If you make just... one line to your enemy, the enemy is just gonna build a line <laughs> towards your terrain and summon his one, 21 damage unit inside your terrain. So it's That's what I'm saying, just situation. fill your terrain. Fill huh? your terrain with... Uh, don't have any... Yeah, empty. but what if you can't afford to build... 10 units because you have 10 terrain pieces. <laughs> only build a, so only build a land and you can put a unit on well, it. Well, see, here's the other thing. Yeah. A smart, good player isn't going to allow you to have that efficient land placement. He's going to force you to build land to be able to Why? do anything. I mean, the combo well, isn't well, happening well, early game. The combo uh, isn't happening you, early game. The combo is not happening early game. How do you get to your opponent's orb without getting terrain? You, I, I don't understand the problem. Yeah, I mean, the deck is so weak without... The combo, you just you can't do anything, you just but play it slowly, you don't have to rush him, you just have to slowly place terrain and put units on it. That's it. I, I've done it, played against, against Milo, who, who's done, I, I think he plays the best and I won. It's not that hard. Yeah. So, so it's right. I, I, if, I, if you just build terrain to your fairy farms, you have six squares um, minimum. So if you stop building terrain completely after you get your Faria farms, you get you have to build six units. I guess that would be the counter. But what if you build seventh terrain and eighth terrain and ninth terrain? Suddenly you just get too many terrains. You cannot fill it every fill it all, and then you get you have to eventually get to your opponent's orb. So uh, it, is a, it is it is a late game combo. Building terrain? It's, you build tier one fairy farm and you just build towards them. I'm speaking them. from experience here. I tried to fill my terrain. I just didn't have enough stuff. And then he played, you know, mind travel and just jumped three times. And well, here's <laughs> the thing. I personally don't think it's OP. I just think the amount of raw damage you can put out with the combination is too strong. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of being able to, like... Well, okay, we'll put it this way. I don't like the idea of being able to one-shot a, a full health orb. I do not like that. But... I do like the the idea of that, you know, you can deal damage with Curse and Haunt. I just think it's it's just, I don't think it should be... In one turn, I right? don't know. Yeah, I, I, I do not like one turn. Because it's yeah, like, one turn. Can, this how is can stupid. you predict a one turn? Like, I understand you can fill your land, you can do this. But then against any other normal deck, you're going to lose. Because you're going to be playing so, like, specifically, it's not going to work yeah, out for you. Silly. Like, I, I have I, a I just, feeling that when I'm playing against such an opponent... He's not doing anything. So I'm just I'm just playing the game and he's not doing anything and I'm being bored for 20 turns after which he just jumps and kills me in one turn. It's no it, after against anything else people are playing structures or units and there's fighting there's something happening at least there's economy or anything but that guy is just not doing anything and then he just wins with one combo so it's just aside from any balance discussions because it could actually suck. It could have a bad win ratio, but it's just not enjoyable because he's not doing anything. That's that's and it's my not like opinion. He's on that. in your orb doing you know strategic plays. He's yeah, just he's not, not doing anything, anything and then one shots because you left one tile open. That's mm -hmm. like or you build to one me, more unit. My issue is. Like if you build four units, your orb will die from the uh, vaults of torment with fire flap, and you just need to remember for the whole game to build only three units at a time because fourth one will kill your orb. 
Well, that's exactly what I said. There are two groups of players, you know, players. You know, some of them think this way, some of them think the other way. And they just need to decide which one to kiss. That's all. I don't know. It's also like the playing that kind of deck turns the game less into a board game and more into a card game where you're relying on Oh, draws. yeah, that's true. And I'm not quite sure like what they so, want out of that mechanic. Yeah. Like, do they yeah, want that to be all luck-based or do they I want it to be skill-based? I mean... Mm -hmm. the, the intentions would seem to be that it's more based around skill and land placement than just drawing the yeah, specific Yeah, and, and positioning and... Yeah, just I mean, I don't mind if the they nerf it. I don't mind if they nerf it. It would be fine with me. I don't care, but uh, some people will I, get I that. would like it no, to... No, whatever you do. I think they're taking off a uh, curse proc on mind travel. I'm not sure. Good, good, good. Yeah, I just, yeah. I just it, think my biggest really? problem with it is that it procs on power, and you can have a billion cards that buff power, which then yeah, abuses the curse and haunt. Like the point is that you're moving around and dealing small amounts of damage, not might and guts, and then a bunch of other things, and then triple, you know, energy killing. Like that's not, like, it, well, the game that I played. I like the opponent my opponent had like no cards and I kind of made a few mistakes that allowed him to win but the whole point was I was on his orb almost the entire game killing everything he spawned and yet I lost because you know he was sitting by his feria and then was like well I have this ghost and I'm might and guts and I'm gonna tiki so I'm moving three spaces and boom 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 okay well my orb's at nine well I'm having troubles now so he spawns another one and then does like the same kind of thing and it's just like well I understand that that's playable but I think the damage to the orb is just too much like I don't know. I just don't like being able to do that much orb damage by being next to your own orb, if that makes sense. The, the simple solution would just be to make hunt and curse, uh, you know, a, a value that doesn't change. Just I would just say curse proc only one time, or, or something like that. Either way, yeah. it will it will get some group of players pissed. <laughs> So whatever they do, I mean, it's not going to be okay for everyone. But, yeah. the, but, but the argument I, I that it pleases only one uh, group of players can be made against uh, made with any change made to the right, game. Right. That's I true. Agree. That, that's that's true. And I think they should do whatever they think is right. And I, I actually, I really don't care. <laughs> I, don't right. know, I don't care what. Yeah, it is. I don't, I don't yeah, plan on I playing think... the Wombo combo deck. So. Yeah, I think if you're thing. playing against it, it's annoying, but I don't think it's good and sound enough to for it to be an issue, it's not if that strong. makes sense. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's why it's like, it's really annoying when it works, but most of the time you're just like, well, I'm going to beat you because you're playing pretty bad just yeah. to get this, you know, one chance it's to work. Just... So it's like this weird balance of if you get it, it's OP, and if you don't, well, then it's absolutely the worst thing ever. It's like the worst and best in one deck. It's very interesting. For me, it's all about the enjoyment Definitely. It's not enjoyable to play against it. And not even aside from any balance. It's just my boring. deck. My deck isn't enjoyable to play against either, though. <laughs> but I love playing it, so I don't know. I don't know if that's an argument that could be made. <laughs> but you're doing something. I can that's see you arguments. doing something. I mean, I you're building out. structures. You're like Builder Bob, man. Isn't that the same argument? Well, I won't bring up Tiki again. <laughs> you won't bring up Tiki again. Uh, uh, doing something. It kills I harvesters. Do something we'll against play it different harvesters. Nice. The two guys I did play against, uh, I I felt they did play. Like I didn't feel they were just sitting on the feria spots and just drawing for that because I didn't see much disc uh, discards of cards at all. Like I that I mean they were playing. I felt like especially the green one with the vault of torments because that was coming out of nowhere. Um, well, except the fact I should have looked at his resources, but I was like, I'm winning, it's game. But, uh, I mean, it was a fight up until that point, uh, so I felt he had just made, like, he had made some sacrifice to his deck to add the possibility of doing that combo, um, is what I think, in, in the green case. But in the yellow case, I don't know, it, I, I guess I, he didn't play that much creature, he just tried to slow me down, is what I feel like. Decks, decks like that add variety to the game too, though. Like, I think yeah, they do. I don't want it removed. Yeah. I like it. I just don't like it one-shotting. I think that's where my issue is. That's true. But I mean, I mean, I guess you could look at it from a balance. I mean, if you're gonna be okay, so chat's always talking about. Well, it's not about being fun. It's about being competitive. So let's talk com competition. If you can kill an orb by spending six or seven energy, is that balanced? Like, yes, it's a lot of resource, but you know, if you want to talk about balance, like, well, how many? It, how much energy would you have to spend being on an orb to kill it? And if the answer is, okay, well, it, it, a normal creature without, you know, infinite buffing and without moving, okay, you have to spend nine or eight energy to kill the orb. And with this deck, you can kill the orb as well with six or nine, or I'm sorry, nine or eight energy. 
like you know that seems balanced but then again you have to take in consideration i'm not next to your orb i haven't had to spend all these actions and all these resources to move progressively towards your your base i can just do that from anywhere so i think you know if you're looking at just competitive nature like I don't know. I, I, like I, I, it. I love that it can happen. I think it's great that you can just like one shot. And it's like, ha, I have this, you know, I have all five Egyptian God cards or whatever those, uh, whatever the Yu-Gi-Oh! equivalent is. But the deck is, I just think it I, I should don't think be one shot. Good. Go ahead. It's not, it's not a good deck. I mean, I, I can promise you that anyone who runs this deck now will, will have less than 50% win rate. Oh, yeah, yeah. Plays it's against awful. People yeah. Who it's, it's, yeah, it's just, so, it's just when it works. So, I mean, who cares? <laughs> Yeah, like I mean, if, why, why, if actually, I, I will never, never lose to this deck unless I, I, I don't draw a harvester in like the first challenge game. accepted. Oh. Challenge, challenge accepted. Sure. No, no, but honestly, oh. honestly, I, I, I sometimes I like the argument where okay, let's see how, how like the top level play, the competitive play, the the the, the so called really good players. Uh, how how does it look there? Because let's say we host a tournament, um, and uh, maybe let's play best out of three. Uh, then, or even if it's best out of one, I don't think you'll like ever see a guy play a you know one shot combo deck, a wombo combo deck that will actually win the tournament. I mean that won't happen um, in in that environment. Well, yeah. Yeah. So it's cheese. Yeah. It's the same thing in StarCraft. The cheese does work, but it doesn't mean it needs. It to works be changed. sometimes, and that's kind of where I'm at. Like. I think it's really it dumb, but I don't think it should be removed. I just think it should be tweaked so it's less of a one-shot and more of a there's a possibility to beat it. So it's not 100%. It will win. You know, it'll be two turns. At least two turns, there's an opportunity, and that's less frustrating than, well, I can literally do nothing but sit here and watch yeah. this combo. Mm -hmm. I would want that opponent to actually do something, like multiple times, maybe five curse units at five times. <laughs> Yeah, or just just do something with the board instead of just collecting fairy and then sitting there uh, on fifteen fairy drawing cards. Cause it's just such a frustrating thing when I have to move my move my units slowly to the orb and then start attacking it, praying to God he doesn't have the right cards. You know. I guess this is where someone did tell me like, well, maybe you shouldn't have let him collect that fairy. Like, you know, there's strategic part where you should maybe try to stop him from that. Except some decks are just not built to rush. And yeah, that is true. Yeah, yeah that's that's maybe he gets it quick should, enough. I, but most people are going to accumulate that much fairy to course, save for their combo. Natural. Like, you can't keep him off of a hundred percent fey unless you have specific cards to deny that. Mm -hmm. But at mm -hmm. that point, it's a different strategy, and you're probably going to win. Just because of your deck, not because of three goblin explosions in your starting hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Oh, okay. Um, I'm yeah, calling. I, I think it's good. Uh, I mean, seriously, if if you, someone has that much problem with this deck, just put put a wish of the devil in your deck, and that's it. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, I wish I had in my green deck a Wish of the Devil at that point, and that I actually noticed. Like, obviously, because I didn't have the Wish, I never really... Uh, in that Vault of Torment thing, I, I just never paid attention to his Feria account. They wouldn't have 20 Feria, though. They can, can't they efficiently get that combo without spending 20 Feria? Isn't it? Not uh, it's not 20. Uh, 14, yeah. I think, one guy so did it So even if with. you had Wish, it still wouldn't beat the combo... Even if he racked up, because then he'll just wait one turn, grab, you know, six or three, and then you still can't one shot. So it's like, Wish is a counter, but it's like a counter technically. It's like, yeah, I'll do 14 damage, but he's doing 21. It is a counter uh, uh, if um, you kill his initial Theria supply collected from the early game, and yeah. in the mid game, control his spawns. So he you gotta use Void Sphere. You gotta use Void Sphere, ultimate counter. <laughs> I want to see Void Sphere being used uh, more. Right? I, I, I'm, I'm looking at that card in my library. I'm like, you could be so good. <laughs> it's so one, day. <laughs> one day. One <laughs> day. You and I on the board. <laughs> uh, well, I think, I think we're, we're done. This we're done. Yeah, I was waiting for that. Job. Like, I mean, obviously the transition has to be Dale's Pale Ale. Shit, it's mirrored. My, my chem is mirrored. That's uh, a lad. Ella, Ella. Yeah. So anyway, with that, we're, let's talk about the uh, the hopeful future of um, uh, maps specifically for two versus two or three three free for all. Like other game modes than one on one. Is is that something you guys want to see? Yeah. <laughs> they, they said they're gonna leave the one v one map. 
and just make it 20. I'm going to link the thread so, in chat that shows uh, the uh, the maps. Go ahead. So, so I mean, unless they decide... I mean, uh, if, if, if you're linking to the thread Please where a guy same. suggested um, a suggested different versions of the maps, there it, that's the thread where one of the devs responded with, Hey, we spent four years just playtesting uh, to find the perfect map. And he gave, like, everybody should go read it, though, because there's a really good post by a dev further down that thread where he goes through every one of those maps posted and tells uh, the, uh, the 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 poster you know what you know what's the problems and what's the good things as well like uh, apparently the last one of those uh, suggested map models uh, the last one is apparently the the, the best one actually uh, f from from that dev um, but still not maybe you know there's still problems with it um, yeah. so like how would uh, how would let's let's yeah let's go that way again. How would Swag Beetle want to see uh, the um, where's the a link? Multiplayer? Uh, sorry, but I can't find any. Post it on chat. post it in Skype as well. Uh, but yeah, Swag Beetle yeah. like multiplayer oh, more okay. like two on two team play. Uh, something you you would like to see. Um, how would you like to I see? I think it? team team play would be amazing. Like yeah. even with this even with this uh, like the layout, I think it'd be really fun. It would be hard to balance though. I think. Yeah, uh, I think I want to play like double red or something. Or something ridiculous. Like, no <laughs> double structures. Yeah, double structure deck. Like that would be so dumb. I think uh, it should just be a no. It'd be a lot more control based. It shouldn't be competitive. Yeah, it shouldn't be competitive. I don't think it would be really hard to balance it for competitive. They would need to change cards, but yeah, yeah, yeah I think it would I be mean, hilariously fun. I would love it. I think it'd be awesome. I think it'd be amazing. I definitely don't think it should be competitive, but I don't think it should try to be competitive. I think it should more be like, hey, dude, we should play, and that would be fun. But to answer yeah. the double red structure, why not make it that you can only have a certain amount of cards, you know, total for your team? Like, you can only have three per group of two, if that makes sense. Like, per side, I'll put it that way. So you can't have, like, nine Six fire disrupt. flaps. You can only have three. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, you could do like something back like that. Back. But matchmaking would be terrible, because then it would be, like, it would, it would only work if you queued with someone who you knew your deck was compatible with. So that would cause a billion issues, but... I think people will just find the. Have you have you guys read the, the stretch goal? What? Sorry, what am I? Have you read the stretch goal? Uh, at one hundred thirty thousand dollars, they have two versus two mode as a stretch goal. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah uh, I don't think you can get there. It says it says this. Now comes the serious stuff. A two versus two mode is something that will truly multiply multiply Faria's value. There will be an additional ladder. Uh, new strategies will be possible. Some decks will combo, others won't. Uh, and above all, the game will allow you to have fun with friends. This is how the two versus two will play as designed today. So they seem to have at least written down somewhere a design for two versus two, where they are saying uh, teammates get to play simultaneously. <laughs> Every turn, each teammate receives three actions, but no additional gold. Um, teammates have a separate deck, hand and graveyard. Teammates share the same orb. The map is the same size, well, except if we change our mind during playtesting. <laughs> so, same map, same orb. Uh, you guys have your own deck, hand and graveyard. You have three actions each. But you get no additional gold each, each turn. That is very close to how the game is already. You just just remove that additional gold, I feel, you know, and just added another player sharing your life, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is is what were you that say, Omari? is that how it's gonna work? Out? Like, is that a good way to do it? Uh, My biggest. I... <laughs> so, Joy, let's go, Joy. My biggest doubt with that would be if there's uh, the same map size except four players. They're just gonna spawn twice as many units, right? I mean, Almost. you have six because... six action points yeah, as a so team. Yeah, so there's gonna be just more units in less space. Are the Faria combat mechanics up to snuff and uh, able to support such battles? Because it could turn into a ridiculous kind of uh, snake <laughs> of units <laughs> trying to just devour each other, you know? Because there's just no mo not enough room for all the units to actually have a good battles. Because what if what if they doubled map size? That would be cool. I would love that. It would really hurt the, rushes, uh, but it would be good. What? No, the, it, the, the rushes would be like two hours. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe rushes. make make it four lanes. I would actually be for four lanes, you know, of and four failure spawns in the middle, maybe, so that yeah. there will be just more 
areas for engagement, more places where units could engage, so it's not yeah. just silly snake lines. Also make a jungle, you know, make it a MOBA. <laughs> <laughs> make it a MOBA! <laughs> oh <laughs> my god! <laughs> there we go! The neutral monsters! <laughs> yeah. Let's get the Baron, guys! <laughs> Jesus, I. Okay, we Very don't really know. It's a good topic, though. <laughs> it's a good topic. Uh, we want to see it. Um, I actually, uh, you know, with that said, I like another topic came up because I, I honestly don't feel we can discuss two versus two or uh, multipl uh, multiplayer. I mean, t uh, th that type of game modes that much. Uh, with it's just theory crafting and speculation. It but is. what came what came up here right now though is the Kickstarter and the stretch goals. Um, uh, let's start with Joyful and move in clockwise here. Uh, Joyful, what do you think? Uh, what will they reach? Uh, will, how many stretch goals will we get? It basically depends. I would hope that uh, until the end of Kickstarter, Theria will grab attention of some big guys from YouTube or Twitch. If that happens, it can get blown out of proportion and we could get a board game, honestly. Mm. And if it doesn't happen, we're probably going to get somewhere around 100k, 90, mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. 80, I don't know. But it's basically hard to predict because the way things w were going so far is may not be the way things will be. If uh, someone, someone big gets behind failure, it can get blown really high. If, it, if not, then about 80, 90k, I would say. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. With that said, also uh, we are at sixty-eight thousand two hundred uh, two hundred eighty-three dollars right now. Um, so yeah, that's where we at. We have thirteen more days to go. Uh, I do feel we'll get at least one stretch goal. What do you think, uh, good old one, great old one? <laughs> Jesus. Oh. Um, I I just agree with John. If someone big will, you know, publish a video or something like that, we will probably get a lot of money and. Uh, if not, it will probably be just a hundred or hundred and ten, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay, case <laughs> Well, I've at least from what I've seen, it looks like it's slowing down. It looks like it's reached its peak from what the current community can do. So I feel like it's gonna just reach up a little bit more. I think it's gonna be fully funded. I don't think that's a question. I mean, we're so close. I highly doubt it's it's not going to get funded, but I don't know. I think it'll probably hit, you know, 80, maybe 90, depending. We still have, like, what, two weeks left or something? But I do think for it for us to even talk about, you know, reach goals, I re or the good reach goals, like 2v2, that's what we really want. I think it really needs a big YouTuber like, you know, the cynical Brit, you know, people like that, just to make a video and say, guys, you should go play this game, and then we get, you know, five extra people. Even if they only donate five dollars, that's a good chunk of money. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, it mm -hmm, is. Mm -hmm. I liked your uh, your Total Biscuit uh, Im impersonation there. It was really spot on. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Swag Beetle, what do you think? Yeah, I think Total Biscuit would totally play it if he knew about he it. He would. Like, the problem do is, I... like... <laughs> the advertising for this game like really sucks. I think, um, it's, especially it's with Hearthstone out. Casting. Especially with Hearthstone out, like it's it's just getting eclipsed totally. Like yeah. Total Biscuit, like uh, who else would be good? Notch <laughs> would probably support it. There's just a whole bunch of people that have probably haven't heard about it that just we haven't reached out to. And I think if we do that, it'll definitely get fun. It, well, it's definitely getting funded, but we'll definitely reach every single stretch goal if someone like Total Biscuit is gonna yeah. do something about it. You know. I wanna. Look at what Tornis did. I wanna address Tornis? the chat. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I want to dress. I was gonna chat. say like <laughs> Tornus, like he, he was screaming Feria. He had like I don't even remember what his highest, but it was like two, mm -hmm. three thousand people. Then he switched to Feria, and that's where I came in. I know there was a lot of people that got introduced because of it, you know, a main streamer like Tornus. And I think that's just we need we need that again. We need it one more time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it will just... I it, I think it was actually me who told Tornus about it. Like like Tornus heard about Feria, but I think I pushed him over the edge by. Nice. On, on his stream chat, so I, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna message Total Basic and I'm just waiting for him to get a little bit burnt out on Hearthstone. Yeah, yeah, yeah Hearthstone, That's the biggest Jesus. Problem. Uh, you know, I wanna, I wanna say, cl closing time in uh, in chat said uh, about Total Biscuit that he does know. He said it's on his list. That is what we, at least we heard from uh, cool. the forum. Because on the forum, uh, there's been in, in one of the threads there, someone said that Total Biscuit has replied saying that it's on his. Uh, to do list or to I mean to look at like he's gonna look at it if, at some point like it's on that list that does not mean he, he that doesn't mean he's 
I don't think he's looked at the game. That's the thing. I don't think he's yeah. gotten to that point where he's like, let's look at what this game is. Because I think as soon as he does look at the game, I think he will be interested in doing mm -hmm. something. I think I think so. he would be the kind of person that would love this game, honestly. Yeah. Like, yeah, this is yeah. like directly well, the kind of game that he would endorse. Like, this is it's just, ah, uh, we just need to harass him, all of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, game. everybody should PM him and be like, hey, Feria, dude, you need to do it. Like, everybody watching right now should just go, just, I don't know, PM him on YouTube. Would increase I, would, a lot. I wouldn't recommend that. I, I think it's annoying. Like, <laughs> think about a guy who's receiving that kind of communication every day, being spammed from all directions. If we organize some kind of um, Petition. organized spam. <laughs> I think it would be annoying more than uh, I don't know. Okay, maybe it will. I don't know. I I just think I that think, I don't think he. Even I, I think he gets spam. I, I think he gets spammed anyway. Yeah. So I mean, I I mean maybe if if it you know he just see the topics just just send an empty message with fairy in the topic. Easy. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I was also when somebody said notch. Uh, I think what all that notch needs to do is make a tweet. If he tweets about fairy. Uh, then you know the the Kickstarter will jump. Yeah, but true. then isn't not developing a competitive? Uh, I don't think he will tweet. That's the thing. He's he's comp he he has scrolls. Like holy shit! Like no, it will not happen. Also, when did they? When did this? I mean, has this been there always? Go to Kickstarter and look at the bottom pledge. Oh, it's been goal. There. Oh, it's, it's been, been there. there. Okay. Yeah, it's yep. been there. I think that's just. Uh, I don't think that will happen. Like. <laughs> I wish. I wish, be, but I don't honor. think he will be like. I I think if I were not, I would be like. Seriously, you're trying to use my name. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm big and I'm big and big and billionaire. Nah, Notch is a really good guy. He reaches out to a lot of lower companies. And I know. He's, like anything I've read about him is just him being like a pure gentleman. He's Swedish, man. Oh yes. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> all right, all right, uh, and yeah, I, 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 I'm 110 percent positive we'll get the first stretch goal, which is like one of the best ones in my opinion. I really can't wait for the community to get together and make come up with cards and have oh, them yeah. nominated, yeah. have them voted on, and like have one new That's card really every freaking month from the community. How? Ugh, like How just much money is that? That is that is ten thousand above. It's eighty thousand. Mm -hmm. It's the first stretch goal. I mean. Come on, we can do that. It's totally. That um, is like my goal. If we get I'm that. I'm gonna tell on. my viewers to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you should, you should totally. Alright, uh, and yes guys, we are getting to the end of the talk show. Uh, I have at least one more topic I do wanna maybe get us heated on again, which is the Smurf accounts. You used to get oh. ahead in ranking and get really hard to get achievements by playing yourself. What would be allowed and what would not be allowed? Like, how can you use your Smurf accounts? Are you, should you be, be able to, uh, say, play... Uh, your, like, should you be able to play two accounts on the same computer at once, queuing up, trying to get to play yourself, and then just I think boost that be one the of them? Of the next show. You want you want that to be talked about on the next show? Yeah, we could save it. Yeah, I so think that we will save it. Like a cliffhanger. <laughs> Aye, yeah. we'll, this we'll is leave a it there. Good then. Cliffhanger. Okay. <laughs> Up next, <laughs> coming to you next week, the Smurf account discussion. Discussion. Crap, I fucking did. Alright. So you all guys want to end it then? You guys let's good? Do the conclusion. Just, yeah. We're just gonna yeah. go. We just. Man, I'm you ready know, to go for like another. Let's just hours. step That's up and like go in slow motion like this. No, I think we should do little outros. You know, talk <laughs> about you know our streams and whatnot. Yeah, we should totally. Yeah. Let's start with Swag Beetle, our guest, our honor guest today. Sagbiru, what are you eating, by the way? <laughs> I'm eating popcorn. I'm sorry. I'm so <laughs> hungry. Oh, I'm so like hungry. Kind of it jelly. is delicious. Yeah. Um. Um. Twitch.tv slash swag underscore beetle. Uh. Yeah. I basically just stream red. If you ever want to see red and structures, then uh, that's where you want to hit me up. Slow. I feel like I'm the only player playing red and like the the top people, but I don't know. Very good player. I recommend Very good player. Very good structure player. I mean, he knows exactly Structures. how to put the foundation down, then put a structure and the roof. Like, it's watertight. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. That's you guys it? totally follow or something. That would be cool. <laughs> follow or something. I'm kind of, I'm kind of new <laughs> to streaming, so... Yeah, I think I'm, you're doing good, know. though. You should have the cam there just okay. to get that extra personal touch. You should have the cam on. Like, nice I have to use the cam on my laptop. Oh, okay. The chat, actually. 
And then I can't, I can't like stream with the cam because I have to use my laptop for the cam. My can't, and my laptop can't stream, so Aww. I have to get like a like an additional cam for my desktop, which cam might be stream. something I might get sometime. I don't know. Yeah, it's still a good stream though. Like it's, it's if you just want to watch gameplay uh, of Red Structures, uh, you should definitely check out Swagville. Uh, it's just laid back, taking forever to win. Um, yep. <laughs> yeah, but he's like, what? What do you rank? Five, ranked I'm, I'm ranked five like every, right now. Every, like, yeah. if you want to learn about the game, like he's the one to watch because he does top stuff. Definitely. How much do you explain, by the way, during your games? Um, okay. when I'm not in raid call, I'll explain a lot. When I'm in cool. raid call, it's kind of cool. hard. I should sh I should get off raid call more often. And yeah, just, like, people explain. want to know what's here in your yeah. head if you're one of the best. I think uh, so too. That's the value. When I, whenever I'm not on raid call, I just I literally just like have an, a, a monologue going. If you've ever watched, awesome. I just talk that, the entire that's time. That's really yeah. why I watch though. Like your monologues, that's the greatest. All right, thanks. Yeah, I'll try that more. <laughs> the monologue goes like this. So I put down an obelisk. It bleeds his health. It's all like, do I want to place the obelisk here, or what is he gonna have, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. There's a lot of thought behind there it. There is a lot of thought. I know. People I don't know. give it enough credit. I don't think. No, I yeah. think it's or, like, good. I think it's easy. good. I think it's good. I love People it. don't appreciate us streamer. <laughs> People don't appreciate the red decks, man. They don't appreciate me. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Okay, uh, Kasev. Oh, me. Um, I stream at KCIV4. I pr I'm not top 10 or anything like that, but I stream and have fun, and I try to make sure that you know the chat that I have is fun and enjoyable. I talk about what I do, but half the time it's wrong, I guess. <laughs> at least that's what chat tells me. <laughs> Sorry. But still, I, I stream and I have fun, and I, I really enjoy the game, and I play it for the enjoyment, not necessarily for the competitive nature of it. Also very really laid back. He doesn't have the hat, though, so I'm not sure if it's... It might be a thing. It you might start be a wearing thing. it on stream. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's good stuff, man. Indiana Kasev. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I have a whip I pull out randomly. You should... No, you don't need like, a whip. It'd be like my tick when I'm playing. You just need a sound effect. Like, let's whip this into action. God, this is so bad. <laughs> there we go. You have your thing. Everybody needs a thing, man. <laughs> uh, okay, great old one. Where, where, where can people catch you? In the ladder? Uh, yeah. In streams, usually. I, I kind of... Uh, oh, yeah, you mod them all. Streams. Yeah, you no, mod. I'm not, not a mod, but I'm, I'm watching a lot of them. And, uh, what do you mean? Either <laughs> Agent's number in Twitch or um, great old one in game, just DM me. If I try to stream, my computer will explode, so that's not possible right now. Oh. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, he's uh, and you're ranked what? Six. Right now. J just, just beneath Swag Beetle. What a scrub. Just <laughs> what a scrub. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm the just salt. Kidding. I need a salt shaker. I should just have this sitting. I have the popcorn. It's pretty salty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, joyful rogue. Mm, joyful rogue. Yeah, I joyful rogue is going to the mountains, guys. I'm going to go <clears> tomorrow. <throat> I'm going to come back the day after, maybe. If I do come back the day after, alive and kicking, then I will be st st still streaming on twitchtv jo joyful rogue. I'm um, Probably gonna be streaming Faria with card giveaways because you know I did play over 700 matches and I have kind of too many cards. Too many. So I'm starting <laughs> to do giveaways now when I'm streaming Faria. It's cool. really fun though. Uh, although sometimes, I mean, I, I stream so much Faria. I have to be honest. If you follow my stream, sometimes maybe more often than you would like, you will see other games, other cool tactical strategy games. Like I streamed XCOM today because I really felt like it. I've got a cool game do uh, going uh, called Door Kickers. There will be some variety, but I am streaming mostly Faria. If you would like to check me out, then, you know, I did drop the link on the channel. You did. I did. Very enjoyable did. streamer. It's fine. It's fine. Thank you. Thank you, Swag <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, definitely. And, uh, Ancient Slumber, Omri Pitara, is actually one of my mods. He, he says he doesn't mod, he does mod. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's doing uh, mod for yeah. me. Yeah, for Chris as well. I even yeah. killed him. Oh, oh god damn it. I need he wasn't ancient... watching when I killed him. Giovanni, no, I, I did, I did. You did, you did, okay. Yeah, Giovanni, Giovanni Slumber, Slumber Jr. is incoming. He just got murdered by aliens. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. 
Awesome. And, well, you guys are all watching this on Metagaming TV, a, a web TV channel slash station, I guess, where we want to, you know, have... Um, it's me and a guy called Stoutmeister who streams usually. I'm streaming, like, I guess 95% of the time. He streams on Mondays, uh, where he does a Soulforge thing. So, uh, he does like this. Uh, you, you show up for the stream, you sign up for a tournament, he has weird as rules every week that you have to build a deck out of and then you you, you play a tournament and uh, then he raffles out some booster packs as prizes so that's pretty cool you can come for that that's on mondays at uh, eight it starts around 8 p.m central european time so that that's that's my plug uh yeah, no. Please follow this channel. I mean, this uh, we'll be doing more of this talk show. I f uh, th this felt awesome, guys. I appreciate all yeah. of you showing up. Like, the story here is Casey started rolling the ball by put putting up a thing on the forum. Uh, you know, uh, I guess he sent out PMs. He got PMs. I sent a freaking PM to him, being like, "Yes." Fucking yes, some someone needs to do this. And uh, you know, joyful rogue joined. Great old I one. I did get a PM. Yeah. yeah. We, I we, pretty yeah. much went like I need a restraining order filed against me on everyone oh, shit. I could find. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And we had a meeting, and oh, this is the product, and I feel so proud. I feel so proud. This is amazing. Next week, next week guys, again, same old one. Same something, time. Something we didn't we didn't week, do yeah. today that that was cool. I think next week we should do the check my deck. I think we should. Oh do that. yeah, yeah. Check mm. my oh deck. We, yeah, yeah. Let's work on that in the Google Doc that we have running. Let's yeah. let's let's just flesh that out into a thing, and we'll uh, we'll uh, premiere the check my deck yeah. thing next freaking Sunday here at Meta Gaming TV with the uh, what do we the Kappa Council? We haven't said that enough. We need to say the Kappa the Council Kappa more. Council. The Kappa, Kappa Council. Council. <laughs> I think it's ironic that my username is KCIV and the Kappa Council is KC. Mm. Oh. Anyone else notice that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're trying to get popular with the crowd. No, we'll not allow that. Okay. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for following. Thank you all for supporting. Please leave any feedback. You can either send them as a PM to uh, to this channel. I'll make sure everybody gets it. Uh, you can leave it as replies if you want to. You know, make it an open letter. You can leave it as a reply in our thread on the forum. Uh, oh, please, someone post that link. Um, and uh, and that and that will be that. I will uh, uh, move us to our. Logo made by one of the devs. He sent us a freaking logo that is so awesome. We're gonna move to that. I'm gonna play a, you know, I'm gonna start playing that uh, that uh, theme song we uh, that theme theme track that we got running, which is Ronald Jenkins. Uh, that is like G E E N K E S something weird as spelling name. Uh, if you Google him, you'll find he has a YouTube channel. He has a web page, uh, RonaldJenkins.com. Uh, he allowed us to use his music for this show, which is amazing. Uh, so please go. You know, if you like his electronic type of music, then please, you know, go buy it. You know, support him. He's a really good, talented musician. Okay. With that said, uh, muting my mic, you guys can keep talking in Skype chat, and uh, we'll have an after this talk in five. Take care, guys. Bye bye. Peace. Bye. Hey, peace out. Hey there. Bye. What's up? Oh, man. This was good. Too much pop. I was so hungry. Hey, check this, I have a cat, don't I? Oh, uh, you... <laughs> Do it in Windows. I don't think I'm hearing it.